Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie in the Morning. Yay for crappy programming that early. Oh my god, it's like watching TBN. Yeah. I'm Jay. Huh? Like when I like when in the bedroom, you don't have to wait for it. It's gonna yeah, happen fast. Well, you know, and no offense to anybody, by the way, if if you really enjoy TBN <laughs> Turner Broadcasting. Is it is that the one that Christian Ch I don't remember? Is it TBN? Yes, Turner Broadcasting State. No, it's not it's TBN, the the evangelical remember the Bible Network? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. is that where like the Joel What the one the bit the Austin's? crazy lady with the pink hair that was yeah. like, Oh God told me on the mountain last night that it's coming down a bolt of lightning that will scorch the earth of homosexuals. If the church wants to, <laughs> if the church wants to pull people in, honestly, they should start with like a, they should get like some wrestling promos together. By the way, like, like a Macho Man, like, ooh, I woke up this morning and the spirit of God was inside me. Oh yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna yeah. be a true sign of the resurrection since he's dead. <laughs> that's what I mean. It's like if yeah. God can bring Macho Man back, what am I waiting for? It's gonna be Preacher Lazarus. <laughs> and, and, and the sorcerer's stone. Ultimate warrior. <laughs> and the ultimate sorcerer's warrior stone. Back. <laughs> How the hell are you guys doing this beautiful Tuesday morning? It feels like a Monday because yesterday was President's Day. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't. I knew it I didn't. because my friggin' kids were home. I haven't celebrated presidents since George Washington. <laughs> he was they, they, they all sucked after that. It all went downhill <laughs> after number one. <laughs> Something about a man and his wooden teeth just gets me gets me going in the morning. You know Revolutionary. What I mean? He's a revolutionary, that guy. Absolutely. Hey, your birthday's tomorrow. It is. Piece it's of crap. tomorrow. I'm going to be 105 years old. Tomorrow's <laughs> my 111th good. birthday. <laughs> you look good. I might card you if you walked in right now. That's a horse shit or lie. I ain't been carded <laughs> since the 1960s. Dude, I walked in. I bought uh, um, like two months ago. I went in a store to buy cigarettes. And my ID's expired, by the way. So I need to get that. You, get, yeah. eventually... you got to get on that, son. Yeah, eventually I'm going to go in a place and they're going to be like, no, nah, and it's going to be somewhere I actually want to be. But I went to buy cigarettes and the guy was like, he scanned it. And he was like, that's a little too expired for me. I was like, dude, I'll look at me. I'm 70. Give me the fucking. Mm. I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'm not going to argue with you, you fucking idiot. Yeah, well, I think that's I think the ABCs check their shit pretty regularly. I never had that happen before. Nobody's ever. Usually, when I'm walking to buy anything, they're like, <laughs> "You're fucking old. Don't card this guy." You know? Yeah, I, was, I think it's uh, it's the worst when you know it's expired and you try to pass it off like it's not expired, but you know firsthand that they're not going to take it. But you act like surprised when they tell you that it's expired. They're like, "Hey, my yeah. man, this is expired." You're like, "What?" And it's like, "That's crazy. I didn't know that." And he's like, "Yeah, well, it expired like two years ago." I'm like, "That's nuts. I never look at my wallet because there's no money in there usually." So Dude, Buster is staring directly into our souls. I know, dude. He does that when I talk. I think he's plotting on me. <laughs> you plotting on me, dog? <laughs> you plotting on me, boy? Is, Don't you know I can whole... slap your neck in 25 different ways? <laughs> dude, I, had, oh, I, I had a, a rough start to this morning anyway. I, I had a fucking... Dude, I had the worst, weirdest dream. Uh, I woke up. In, well, in the dream, I woke up. Gay? I was... I was yeah. Well, I, the, the dick was always there. But... Um, in my face. But... I woke up. I was like barely getting by. It was it was like a destitute, very surreal, depressing life. And then I looked down at my phone, and it said tax tax return accepted. That's a good time. It sucked that's the good. soul out. Sucks the soul out. That's good. Oh no, that's bad. That's right. We yeah, not like you got a tax return. Like your just taxes were accepted is what I should say. Uh, oh okay. yes, yeah, your federal yeah, yeah. fund was your federal taxes were accepted as well as your state tax. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to somebody about that the other day, and they were like. Shh. Like only rich people hate tax day. Us normal people enjoy tax day. And I'm like, no, I mean, no, you don't understand. I work on YouTube. And they're like, oh, that's right. That must yeah. suck. I'm like, yeah, we it does. Diddly dick. Ta it. Tax day sucks. It's, worth, it's really bad. It's depressing. Honestly, I'm it. just like, I always just lean on the side of, will we go to jail? No? All right. I'll go. Well, it'll be okay. I don't, it, as long as we're not making uh, Mike the situation money, we're fine. And trying yeah. to play ghost, ghost of the machine with the taxes, we're okay. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good. Um, he must be he, well. He is stupid, but I was like, if you had a fan of a goddamn history, don't you know that Capone was brought down for that shit? And you thought you were gonna do it, you slimy Jersey Shore shit. Yeah, MC Hammer can't get away with it. You're fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, I don't know. Uh, Ed Boy Movie says, "Shut up, Jay Loomis. Happy early birthday, man. You shut up. Thank you." <laughs> No, you shut up. No, you 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 take on this. You're a duty head. No, you're a duty head. You're both duty heads. Go upstairs. <laughs> Sean, tell me one, two, three. 
put a finger in me. Loving the wham at eight in the morning. You must live in California. Happy early birthday, Jay. Looking back, what are the first movies that come to mind that influence you the most? Well, you go ahead and answer that. Hold on a second. I, I got to let my spool ass dog out. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he said dog. Thought we were going somewhere different there. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I would go with, I'm just going to say seven. Seven, the movie Seven, because um, when I watched Seven, I stayed home sick from school, ate some ramen noodles, rented it on my my pa- parents' pay per view back when you had to pick up the phone and call in the movie you wanted to rent, and uh, it ended, and I went cinema. I was like, "That's a fucking movie. I've never seen anything like it." So I'll just say Seven, even though Lethal Weapon Three, Lethal Weapon Two was probably the first ones. Yeah, mine would be uh, Fantasia. <laughs> Gay. Disney Fantasia. <laughs> what a classic that was. No, I uh I I mean it would my favorite movie is Ghostbusters, and I'm always gonna that, that's always my go-to relying to rely on that movie to say that. But and at the same time, I remember watching Nightmare on Elm Street one super fucking early around that same time. So it's kind of weird that a movie about a goddamn pedo child killer is the one that influenced you the most. You're like, wow, Wes Craven's great. But you're like, <laughs> you're but you're seven. But uh I I would say Ghostbusters. I mean, as far as like special effects, the comedy, the, the way that it the, the way that it felt and all came together. I mean, it's it's a magical movie. It's magical. Jay could have went with any number of the lesbian porns that he used to rent. I, no, I, I like that was when I was like a little older, ten or eleven, and there were very few men. There was actually a lot, but I mean, I never got that hardcore shit because the guy was like, "You can't. I can get, I can let you get away with some stuff, but not that <laughs> stuff." You always walk in Jay's room, and he had this dresser in the back corner, and like. On one stack would be like the regular movies he rented, but you always knew there was another stack inside. Yeah, it was, like a, it was, it was always like, it, it was a glowing it, tape. Well, dude, it was it like was a glowing. fucking scarlet letter because the tape was always like a weird color, like it was like 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 bright red, yeah, or something Jay, like, like that, or like don't you know, touch that. that. I feel like that's for adults, guys. But no, <laughs> that, yeah, dude, that guy. I remember the guy that used to rent it to me. His name was Chris, and it was so fucking embarrassing when he finally got caught by the manager when I came up there. That one, it was sometime. I don't know what time of the day it was, but. He usually was the only one there, and I would like he would never say anything. He would just like, and he gave it to me. It was soft core porn, by the way. It wasn't like hardcore, like anal probes. You could see inside the lips of the. But it was vagina. always lesbians. Yeah, it was. Always, I'm not watching Every dick. Time. I'm not watching some wiener. I always fast forward that part. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I got up there that one, and I had a I don't know what movie it was, but the guy was like he was checking it out, and his manager was like, "Dude, you know what it was? It was your former uh, coach, the one with the lisp." And oh, and um, video selection. Um, Oh, in basketball, like the yeah, that the guy, the, that, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah, he was the one that caught me because he was the uh, he was the guy over top of Chris, and he was like, "You can't, you can't rid him that." He's like, "What are you talking about, dude? I do it all the time." <laughs> and he's like, "He's not 18. And he's like, "That guy was weird." Yeah, no, he was like, "Sorry, man, boss isn't gonna let me do it for today." I was like, "That's right. I was written it for my dad anyway. I've been printing. I don't rent it." <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing dude. i had to so walk away i was like because that was the only thing i was renting so i had nothing and i walked out and my big dad was waiting on me he's like what'd you get i was like they didn't have it it was out <laughs> you should have been like hey big dad go in there they got a tape waiting. <laughs> no he would be like no because if you know, that made that made sense because as soon as i got rejected i sent my elderly father there and the guy's like you know what your son was trying to rent it's like no <laughs> you're a goddamn tape <laughs> he's like i'll take it let me look at it <laughs> Texas Tayton said, need some wham for me this morning. How about them Chiefs? I got a hernia last night. Woo. Now, that don't sound good at all there, Texas. Too. You need to sit your ass down and get by the air conditioner down there in Texas. We got a heat wave coming. Relax yeah. that ass. Hey, speaking of which, I've been watching. Thank you, Texas Tayton. I've been watching um, my 600-pound life a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, Katie has, and I just I get sucked in. You know what I mean? It's Are fucking, they still making new never- episodes? I don't know. We're just we're just barreling through the seasons. I don't know if they still do it or not. You guys not seeing this show? It's about people who are six hundred pounds or higher. You got a pizza done? No, it's dude. It, it's the weirdest thing. I have a watch somewhere. I can't find it, and it goes off every <laughs> morning. Serious? It goes off every morning at eleven ten. I don't know where it is. I think you it's a ghost. Your asshole. One. Yeah, I checked it. Trust me, Richard <laughs> Gear and me don't have that in common. <laughs> even though he had a scroll up his butt. Uh, but no. Um, there's this guy named Dr. Now, and he's the one he's like, and he's, I don't know what nationality or whatever it is, but he has this weird like mouth thing that he does when he talks. And he's, he just always kind of like shuffles in there and he's like, 
you lose 40 pounds and uh, mm-hmm. it's like, uh, I'll give you a candidate for my last surgery. <laughs> like, that's like the show every time. And then they're like, I can't. And he's like, you're fat. And then it's like, it's just back and forth or whatever. But uh, he told one dude, this one guy kept knocking over his pee jars and stuff like that and was being rude to the to the nurses. And Dr. Now was like, no, you see, this is Texas. <laughs> he's like, you're in Texas. We don't put up with that. You, I don't know why I'm starting to sound like uh, Pedro from fucking, uh, I can't do his accents, but he just sounds like he's got, He's got a like a, a sardine in his mouth or something when he talks. You also so mess around with me, I, I slap your titty in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, we, of... tried, we tried to help you here. And if you want to come in with attitude, <laughs> i slap you in the face. That's closer. Right? If it was if yeah. it was older and you were having trouble getting it out, he that should, would be oh, spot should on. Be like, now listen here, you fat type of girl. <laughs> we have we have a plan set in motion for you, but if you want to keep it in the goddamn McDonald's, you'll die. <laughs> not that far off. I know. I, I, I know. Off. I know generally who he is, but yeah, I don't know what country. Kind of By the way, I want to say our stupid show last week. Uh, yes, we did get it wrong. Swiss, Switzerland, and Sweden. Uh, when we were talking about the one that was neutral, didn't have an army, and the Swiss army not. We, it's literally Switzerland. I think we said oh. Sweden. But that shit oh, okay. always confused me. Sweden, Switzerland, Norway. It's all up in that one section. I don't know. They, they always cross over to me. I don't know geography very well at all. I can't, yeah. I couldn't tell you. I don't even know where like Texas is on a map. Isabel, speaking of the Swedes, she's Swedish, right? Yeah. Is it, it's not offensive to say Swedes, right? Well, that's no, sw- that's what they are. They're Swedes. Sweet Isabel. Okay. They're Swedes. Not Says, Swede. Spring Sweet. is in the air. I want to celebrate. Love you. I love you too, Isabel. Hey, love you. I'm so happy we're doing this new streaming schedule. Tuesday, Thursday is 11 a.m. Because folks like Isabel can join us. And uh, is it spring in Sweden? God, some people have it all. Yeah, I'm not you looking know? forward to spring. I hate fucking spring, dude. You're a piece of shit. No, dude. It's like allergy season. And then all the bugs come back. God damn. I can't yeah. imagine those swamp asses in Louisiana, what they got to deal with. Ooh, wee. Man, that's dark too. but honest to god though like i don't even mind the fucking bugs because at least it's not cold and dark and depressing every day i don't like, mind I, it. I, I like the, i like the fall weather it's like that's Fall's the only great. time that's because then you got bugs dying and then you got nice cool brisk air but you don't have freezing cold i gotta get i gotta get the fucking fall's great <laughs> winter's gotta go dude I, I have seasonal depression all right you want me to die you want me to stick this into my heart <laughs> look at the size um, of this fucking needle <laughs> no dude like even like days like that like look at this shit oh the yeah. sun is out and then you walk outside and you're like god damn it's fucking cold yeah you, you walk outside and sub-zero nut punches you it's like sub-zero yeah. wins <laughs> like i'm gonna do some stuff outside it's like no i'm not uh hey nessa says happy birthday jay enjoy a beer on me because not sure if this even covers a pack anymore but i'm so thankful <laughs> for you it's true Love thank you. you Nessa. thank you vanessa that's very sweet of you and yeah you're probably right it doesn't cover a pack that covers two beers in today's inflation <laughs> <laughs> that's uh ten dollars a piece bitch and i'm like what ten dollars <laughs> well yeah. i better enjoy this one Dude, oh, me and katie tonight are going to um uh manchester oh yeah where we saw Everclear at, and we're seeing Highly Suspect. Have you ever heard of yeah. them? Um, I don't good. remember much about that night. I remember getting really sick and leaving. Yeah, but we were spending a lot of money. Like, that place is expensive as shit. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, that's I what we're talking about. about mm. We're going to go Yeah, too bad. You, just, you need to just bring your own beer and drink in the parking lot. <clears throat> it's not like people haven't done that before. They have a lot of security, uh, unfortunately. We're gonna, that's what we were talking about. There, I was like, I'm not going in when doors open this time. She even said that. She's like, I was like, we shouldn't go in with doors open. We should just wait till the first band starts playing because I don't care about being up in the front for this one. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I don't know why we didn't do that last time. But she's like, because Jay got drunk and had to leave. <laughs> I was like, well, to be fair, none of us made it all the way through that concert. Well, who, the, who was there? Oh, it was like fucking fastball, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was fastball and. Uh, well, I thought it was the Dead Kennedys, which I was really excited about. But I'm oh like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was Sister Hazel, <laughs> dude. I'll tell you, I'm like, I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. I was starting to drink. I was like, I just wanted to get to Everclear so I could enjoy. It. I'm like on a ticking time clock. I'm like the Hulk. You know what my secret is? I'm always drunk, <laughs> like, <laughs> and so it just explodes in the fucking anger and uh, vomity time with the Hulk. I, th- I just think, under- yeah, it happens to the best of us. Just underestimated the weight, like because you got the well, band stops, and then they got to sit, break it down, and the next band's yeah. got to bring their shit up, and it's like. Well, we also moved community. around a lot. We went from a restaurant thing. We started drinking there. Then we got to the concerts. Then started drinking before they'd even gone on. That's what got me. Yeah, yeah, and then plus, and the amount of beer money we spent in 
Manchester because it's like eight bucks, nine bucks a drink, twelve for Katie's fucking Tito's, and you know it's like I, I can't afford that shit. All right, yeah. <laughs> but um, the thank you, Nessa, you're the best. Thank you, Vanessa. I like your face. That Vanessa's got stories. You guys don't even know the stories Vanessa has in this world. Daniel Scott, thank you, sir. Says let's get a Wham revival up in here. Loomis <laughs> preach. Oh, you sacrilegious, Daniel. Oh, I love it. It's been a while since we've done that. Someone's burning already, and it's not even fucking noon yet. Uh, yeah. That was once three wise men that came out of the desert, and they saw a baby in the manger. One of them said, what the hell is that? They said, it's a goddamn baby. I got to get it. I was like, I follow the new star. Oh, and then they asked the woman, who is that? She said, it's the child of God. Mm-hmm. And then I, the other man said, I think it's bullshit in the story. Always question things. <laughs> even though they hey, were supposed no. even though they were supposedly wise men, we don't know. Tell I, didn't, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, by the way, I believe in that shit. I'm just joking. I was like, <laughs> be like, I thought you said you believed in God. You just make fun of it all the time. Like, no, I'll make fun of Muslims too. Whoever, step up to the plate. <laughs> step up to the plate. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Kyle says, Happy birthday, Jay. Two bucks just for you. Thanks. Oh, like, like, that's like uh, that, that scene in, uh, are you in the army now. This is all for you. See how much money I'm saving? <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Hey, that two bucks will go a long way. We'll buy us some uh, juju bits. <laughs> and Beast Slayer says, Hey, guys, love. I'm in Ohio and scared as hell about the chemical fire. Ooh, yeah. And I need a laugh, please. Love you both. We'll try. I don't know if we can make you laugh. Um, that's going to be hard for us, but we're going to have two hours to try. Yeah, well, you know, uh, that sucks about what's going on up there, dude. Hopefully everything turns out well, but you know how the government is. So I don't know. Yeah. I hope it's good, though. I mean, maybe people are just overreacting, but I've seen the videos and shit. I don't, I mean, some of it's bullshit. It's like on TikTok. So I know it. There's a lot of it just made up for clicks, but Goddamn Ooh, it's yeah. crazy shit going on out there. I mean, I was like, somebody call Dustin Hoffman. Get him out of here in a hazmat suit. We got to get this <laughs> thing contained. Dude, we were talking about that the other night. We did go out together for Jay's birthday the other night, and we were talking about that. And, you know, it starts out just normal conversation. And then you get a few beers in you, and by the end of it, you're like, dude, they got fucking cameras in the streets, street we lights. Yeah, we, I yeah, swear to God. We got fucking tinfoil hats on for like an hour. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit. And I was already, I even I started being aware that we were getting a little crazy and I was starting to look around. I never do that. I have a loud voice, but even I was like, oh shit. Because I don't want to say weird shit. Like, I was like, yeah, man. I mean, the aliens have been here like, sp- like spot us for a while, right? I mean, come on. You all know that. You stupid <laughs> if you don't. Yeah. yeah, man. It's crazy. I hope it turns out well, though. I mean, it's also going to affect us if, if it turns out the, you know, the Ohio River is like, actually contaminated all the way down because we kentucky gets a lot of their water from the ohio river so yeah feel better about that at least misery loves company right like we're yep. in it together we're not that far yep. from you and yep. we literally we'll look, in kentucky we, we'll all we'll three get together the <laughs> to yeah. the river and that's how we get our water that's what we wash in the river actually we get naked yeah we don't we wear shoes river. either and have tractors to get there you yeah. know yeah. well look we'll all just be like this is government from, internet by the way we'll all be that's creatures from the hills there. have eyes together fuck it yeah yeah, and yeah. we'll be hot. We'll be the yeah. hottest hills have eyes people around. Yeah, we'll live free in the desert. <laughs> you imagine that, like, oh man, I can't, I can't stream tonight. I, I'm on that government internet. <laughs> I, Dude, I, I don't know. I don't even say. I don't even want to say that. Don't bring them. Don't bring attention to it. No, I meant like there's microphones cheese. in the, the. They're probably listening right now. I don't mean that. I mean like government cheese, like cheap. Internet, oh, you mean like, like welfare? I get you. <laughs> yeah, I got that. <laughs> That Brett Favre stuff. Uh, you know, every time uh, I hear, every time I hear welfare, dude, I was like uh, that scene of Dangerous Spies. He goes, "You two brothers, like, shh." So he wish he was get off that government cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, somewhere down in Fullerton, says, "Hey guys, loving the new schedule because I can watch it without staying up till five a.m. LOL. Hey. Happy birthday, Jay. Hey, thank you, Richard. You know, it feels good and it makes us feel like standard stand up citizens. You know, yeah, because um, you you can't. I mean, I'm sure there will be times that we do, but most times you you, you can't get drunk at 11 a.m. in the afternoon. There's errands. To Don't run. challenge me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't challenge me. But hey, it makes the streams like the Patreon streams that we do, where we where we totally take years off of our lives and our livers, that much more fun. That's what that's yeah. the way we saw it, at least, right? Yeah, and I think I think you're closer to it. I think it does make you feel like a functioning adult. Mm-hmm. If you're able to be up in the morning and do something. Yeah, see, mom, we can do it sober. <laughs> I swear. 
Um, I feel like being sober though, the, the cussing goes up more. You know what's weird? I think it does. Yeah. I, I don't know that, what that is. I think it's just overcompensation. Yeah, you feel you feel. Well, like I know. I, I I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm not so drunk. My tongue works better, so I don't know. That could be it. Yeah. That could be it. Um, I don't know. I'll spread my cheeks and we'll figure it out that way. <laughs> I'm not going in there. Uh, Ooh, uh, eat my uh, ass. Uh, 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 Colton Candler, what's up, dude? Says up, dudes at work cutting down trees. Can Loomis and Charles give my coworker Greg a shout out? Tell him he's lazy. Much love as always. Thank you, Colton. Colton's awesome. I mean, yeah, he's a good guy. I don't have a chalice beer to grab. I'll grab Mountain Dew. That's that seems like what chalice would drink in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh Greg, you're a piece of shit, and uh, no one likes you. And uh, it, the only reason you work here is because they can't get good workers. I mean, fucking Burger King can't get good workers. All right. Um, so I hope you, I hope you fucking die, and not really. Uh, but I hope your dad dies and then I have to investigate it with your hot sister and then I'm totally going to bang her. Yeah. Greg, you dirty, ugly, stupid, nasty, butt crack smelling, lazy piece of shit. Get up off your ass, get to work, help out Colton. What are you doing? They should throw your ass into the mines of Sarlacc. I know it's a fake ass shit from the Jedi movies, but that's where you belong. Get off that government cheese. Because that's what you're going to be on soon. Unemployed <laughs> and on government cheese, you piece of shit. <laughs> Dex Tootin says, Jay, we need you to juju on the beat for your B-Day. What the fuck does that I mean? Don't, hey, Dex Tootin, I'm down with you, you a lot of times. I mean, I sit there and drink fucking natural light with you any time of the day. But now mm -hmm. you're talking about some juju on the beat of your birthday. Man, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, Dex. <laughs> she would be your birthday that oh goddamn God damn, texas down. i mean holy shit texas yeah you know what texas in, reminds me of line. like forrest remember in forrest Gump when he was like naming all the guys that he was in his squad and he could name them all and he yeah. goes and then there was tex i don't remember where texas from <laughs> <laughs> michael park thanks buddy says happy early birthday Jay. hey thank you michael also if you came to texas i'd make your birthday even more special i think i'm on my way putting your pee pee in his mouth delta you could mean that delta airlines booked <laughs> he's like i'll take spirit if i have thank to. you michael uh dustin Feelan, thanks buddy says disney has fox slash hulu for r-rated material happy birthday loomis hey thank you either that or he, he said hope butt dicks hope you get butt dick <laughs> yep that's what he said horny butt dicks hot big dicks uh, <laughs> that's way better See, yeah that's a hot big dicks loomis thank you man i love those uh disney has fox hulu for uh what do you uh for rated material I, I oh think, i see what you're saying yeah 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 hopefully i mean but i don't really trust disney to ever push the envelope they're they're too safe you know well they've had that opportunity to do it for a while but they haven't done it so i i don't know i think a lot of people thought that when they bought the fox catalog even though i was kind of nervous about it because i'm like oh here we go they're gonna disneyfy the shit out of it which up to this point they really have i haven't seen any news showing that they're gonna do anything like uh i just watched uh the james gunn dceu slate of what he's doing and then he was like talking about todd phillips joker as well as michael reeves or is, uh, mike is it mike reeves mike uh, reeves uh, uh from the Matt batman reeves. Matt Reeves, yeah, Matt Reeves. Those are going to be called DC Elsewhere, so they're already doing an alternate universe. So anytime, that's cool. I like that. That's kind of like the DC Black thing they talked about forever. And Marvel has had this chance for a while, Marvel Disney, where they could do their own version of that. Like Marvel, um, you know, Marvel's got like alternate worlds or whatever. They still haven't utilized it. I don't know why, but it sucks. I, Hulu, yeah, I, and they have, they, yeah, they have Hulu too, but. I wish they would. Hey, when Dude, you Disney's said, such like, a fucking over like fat company, you don't even I didn't even know they own Hulu. Honestly. That's why they that's why they bought all that shit. They were just like, uh I want it. Daddy want yep. a lobster. Give it to yeah, me. Yeah, they're like they're fucking Augustus Glump and Willy Wonka. They just grab things. <laughs> exactly. Um uh hot hot big duty diapers. Hey, Jay. thanks, man. Love those. <laughs> it's just danger zone. You guys are a constant reminder to me that it's entirely possible to fight through all of my trials and tribulations. Thanks to y'all boys. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate that. I think what he means is I can't believe your fucks are still alive. <laughs> I know. I know. It's the Necronomicon, I assure you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Really appreciate the kind words, my man. Joe Bob says, happy birthday, Jay. Here's hey. a like and $5. Hey, thank you, man. How do you feel about sequels titled the same as the original? 
Like, what do you mean, like scream or like scream? I think it's kind of dumb sometimes. I think it's confusing. Chainsaw titties. It's yeah, I agree. I mean, Um, I, I I mean, I don't know. Like, can't they just stick a fucking number on it so I know where I'm at? (laughs) Like, like, he's like scream, but then he gets screams different. I mean, they'd already had four movies before. Yeah, what are they gonna do? It's it's telling to you though, because it's like. Well, Scream's weird because they did Scream and then they said, okay, the next one we're going to call Scream 6. It's like, Scream 5? What is it? The mythical clitoris? It doesn't yeah, exist. I, like, what's going on? I think they were just scared. I think they were like, god damn, what if people look at them? Like, they've been five movies of this? Fuck it, I'm not watching it. I guess. And, and then, like, I guess it's the new way to be like, because it's proof that they only remade stuff because they think that that's the only thing that's going to get audiences interested yeah. when they went through the big remake wave. So now we're doing recalls and they're just saying, aha, See, it's actually a sequel, but we called it this. I don't fucking know who thought it'd be of it first. Edge, but it'd be an works. edge lords. We yeah. won't name them with numbers. We're so edgy, bro. Winning eighty one. God damn, that's that's a nightmare icon. I know it's from. Um, Looks like an America? ex-girlfriend of mine after the beer wore off. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, or wine rather. But uh, Chip, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. God damn, no. shut your mouth, Chip. I'm gonna come Chip! like a spider monkey. You gonna let your grandson talk to me like that? Sure as hell am, Chip. <laughs> Chip. <laughs> Look it up. It's in the Geneva Convention, uh, dude. Ben Grimm's right. Deadpool is supposed to be rated R, and it better well, we fucking hope. be. We if hope. it's not, I won't go see it. Fuck you. I'm sure it will be. I mean, why would Ryan Reynolds been promoting it as much as he's been promoting it that it's gonna be rated R? They grabbed Hugh Jackman, so it's already a big deal. There's a lot of eyes on him. So yeah, they, I don't think I don't think they're gonna. I think it's gonna be. You know what? It could be the last time they ever do anything with a rated R superhero, though. I hope someone will grab my Hugh Jackman. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my <laughs> Jackman. Yeah. He's got a nice set of balls down under. Balls. Hey, I got something fun to do, dude. I found some fun stuff to talk about. Uh, by the way, we're going to rank the Rocky movies today. I'm not going to see Creed 3. I'm not either. Um, we'll have our reasons, which there's this news story that we'll talk about today. Uh, so later on, the second half of the show, we will be ranking the Creed movies. But we do have some movie news to talk about. But also, Foist got some weird news to talk about and i haven't read these yet i just read the headlines but i figured it'd be fun for us to go through these together like the big gays we are mm-hmm. mystery man leaves human jawbone at california police station <laughs> look at fucking grizzly adams right here it's fucking shia labeouf what are you up to now <laughs> so, says the unidentified shia, surprise the unidentified man left what appeared to be animal remains and the jawbone the San Bernardino Police Department said this is from February 3rd. I didn't know that until just now, but it says a man walked into Southern California police station, left a human jawbone and other items, and then left. The incident occurred Thursday in the city of San Bernardino. A bunch mm. of useless information. The unidentified man left what appeared to be animal ra- remains and the jawbone. Mm. Uh, the man left and officers were unable to locate him. It was not immediately known whether the remains were real until so the coroner's office determined one of the bones was a human jawbone. Yeah, well, when they catch him, he's going to be like, the bitch wouldn't shut up. <laughs> so I took the damn jawbone. Oh, update. Update. Yeah, he got caught. <laughs> uh, on Thursday, February 2nd, an unknown subject. Oh, no, wait. What? It says update. Sub- subject has been located and identified. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's Chia LaBeouf. Um, is a Hispanic adult, 30 oh. to 35 years of it. Was it you? Yeah, I'm Hispanic. <clears throat> Can't That's you tell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, it says updated and identified, but I guess I don't know. You know what? Every time I hear stories like this, and it's like, and the first thing says like California, I'm like, oh, it happened in California. Of course it did. Yeah, or I'm not shocked. It's like, whatever. It's like, hey, a, a fucking rampaging gorilla with uh, a fucking diapers on killed 55 people in the mall. Like, it, it was California, wasn't it? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it was. Ben said Ezra. <laughs> yeah, there that sounds like Ezra would do it. Yeah, That's those were actually all that shit was like stuff that he found in the desert he used for his black arts magic when he had his cult. <laughs> He's like, I'm done with it though. I'm getting on an I'm on a new leaf. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, he does look scary as fucking shit though. Like he, he looks like I, Ben Affleck when he was in the in, in the worst part of his life. <laughs> Here, I don't know if you guys can see this a little bit better now. Uh you really can't, can you? Um it's either Shia LaBeouf or it. Ben Affleck. Yeah, you can't see it very well, but yeah, he's scary as shit. Who the fuck just walks into a police station and just drops off bones? I, I guess know. somebody with a guilty conscience, or maybe the jawbone was like uh, like something out of Are You Afraid of the Dark and started talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I gotta get rid of this shit. 
or maybe he just maybe he's just innocent dude he just found them in his backyard just digging around it was just like hey well this could be human so i don't really like to deal with people i'm an introvert i'm just gonna drop it off you know if you can drop off a baby at a fucking fire fire department you could drop off you might i might be wrong here but i think if you found a human job or anything that looked like you're supposed to notify the police hey i think there might be a goddamn body buried in my backyard you're like what i don't know might want to check that out i didn't do it though even though then you're going to be arrested (laughs) under suspicion yeah i want me though well that's what they said that's the first person they look at right it's either the husband or the person who found the body so if you ever find a dead body don't tell anybody yeah or or, or, or fuck up. i don't know whichever (laughs) uh there is more though that one wasn't as fun as i thought it would be but i thought there'd be some you know resolution Mm. to that um german ballet director formally apologizes for smearing feces in critics face dude does he not look like the villain in the Die Hard? he looks like the villain in Die Hard 3 oh uh, yeah he does actually i can't remember that was a uh, i once was a man with seven wives well he was that uh, yeah uh the fucking alfred from the ben affleck oh michael jeremy irons jeremy irons yeah jeremy he does irons. look like jeremy It says uh, a German ballet director issued a public apology on Tuesday for smearing dog feces on the face of a newspaper critic. Dude, that's exactly what Rob Zombie would do to us if he ever fucking got in our ass. 100%. He's like, you know what I think of your your, your critiques? Dog shit. Eat. Eat this turd. (laughs) Eat this turd. Actually, he wouldn't need to actually smear anything on our faces. He could just put our faces in his beard. It would smell the same. (laughs) And just breathe on us. It would just smell the same. (laughs) Actually, he could just show us one of his movies. Yeah. That's why he's like, yeah, I've already, I've already eaten shit. I've watched your movie three times. <laughs> oh God, Marco, the gecko lizard was suspended from his post as ballet chief as at the Hanover State Opera following the weekend incident. The theater's management called on him Monday to apologize comprehensively and explain himself. That is some white people shit if I've ever seen. I never. <laughs> you rub dog shit in someone's face and they're just like, it's fine, just apologize. Yeah, I was like, Where, where's the cops? But this guy probably owns like fucking like he probably shops on uh, Saks on Fifth Avenue like every other day, <laughs> and he's like dropped millions. Yeah, fuck, I don't know that dude. In real life, if you walked over to somebody because you're a noisy neighbor, somebody you didn't like, and you just picked up a big pile of dog shit and shoved it right in their fucking nose and in their mouth and said, "I didn't like what he said last week, so I did that." Yeah, they're gonna say, "You know what we need to do? We need all to get together at the YMCA, talk about it, apologize to one another, and walk away." No, bitch, you go into jail. No, nah, they're just like hey, jail. Just send, it, just send an email; it'll be fine. We'll go ahead, you can just send a letter. He's gonna understand. Yeah, I expect. Give him some an, lemonade. Now, those these these ballet people are dramatic, aren't they? Said so I would like to. Did he apologize. like do a, par- a parade? Like, did he do one of those like little fucking like dances before he gave it to? Sorry, him? <laughs> he's like style, and then shoved it in his face. He said style. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that reminds me of when Vince Vaughn got his ass kicked uh, by the stepbrother in the breakup. And oh. it, like he's like a kind of a what do you say? He was like a fairy something or another. He was like, Oh, yeah, like, yeah. He's like, You want to make shit weird? He's like, I'll get some Polacks up here. Shit'll get real weird because <laughs> he was embarrassed because he got his ass kicked by the <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, but, okay. It says, uh, a whole bunch of uh, apologizing. I would like to apologize sincerely to all concerned, first and foremost, to Miss Hester, Hester for my absolutely unacceptable act. In retrospect, I'm clearly aware this was a disgraceful act in the heat of the moment and an overreaction. Mm. It's just the heat of the moment. <laughs> I wish somebody would say, you think? <laughs> Shoving dogs hey, shit in When did face. you find... When was it ever... Go- <laughs> oh, yeah, I just got... I- Listen, sir, I put dog shit in his face. I think I overreacted a little bit here, okay? I've just had a really bad week. You put dog shit in a human's face. <laughs> what are you trying to get him to do? Audition for the new human centipede? Nasty. Over, over, overreaction once. He said he added that it's time for media to rethink a certain form of destructive and hurtful reporting that damages the whole cultural sector and criticized Hester for what he said were often nasty reviews. Oh, get fucked four eyes your feelings got hurt so you put some shit in someone's face oh my god you're lucky that dude didn't beat the shit out of you and break your fancy ass sunglasses you god oh i can't stand my feelings got hurt so i fucking did something stop hurting my feelings it was report according to the daily frankfurter 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 Frankfurter. oh children yeah Um, what are you but you know that's just that's that is the most insane take i've ever heard in my life because someone hurt your feelings with words on the internet because we all know (laughs) the internet's such a nice and wonderful place no one ever says anything mean or untrue on the internet 
So he said some yeah. words that hurt your feelings, and his job was to critique whatever the fuck you were doing, and you got mad as shit and smeared dog shit in his face? Mm-hmm. Got apologized, and then did one of those apologies where he's like, I mean, if I hurt anybody's feelings by shoving dog shit in their yeah. mouth. Um, <laughs> well, that's no. a, he's, a, he's a well-adjusted human being, if I've ever heard of one. I mean, wow. Wowie wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's like those people. Like That's like a when you get your wife, which never happens. To apologize about something, but she's like, "Okay, I'm sorry." Say, Come, no, okay, never happens either. But okay, okay, I'm sorry. They're like, "Okay, I'm sorry," but it's like there's always a fucking but. Just say I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I hate when shit like that goes. Down. It's always, I swear to God, guys probably do it too. But every time I've, they're like, "I was like, just say you're sorry and we're good." And they're like, "I'm sorry," but you know, and I'm like, "See, there you go. It's always an addendum onto the fucking I'm sorry. It's always well, has I'm- to be something else." You just say. I apologize, and we move on, play some video games, fuck around or whatever. But no, it's like, I'm sorry, but, you know, you started it with your attitude. Dude, oh, I, God I, damn it! I, now here we go! You've just riled the beast! Uh, 100%. 100%. There, there's way too many people like that. And if that's you, if you're watching this and that's you, learn to fucking apologize, all right? That shit's the worst. If I hurt your feelings or if you took it that way, I'm... No! Just say I'm fucking sorry or shut the fuck up! Yeah, just say, Like, guys can do this. It's like, sorry, sorry. And then they go back. Girls are always like, I'm sorry, but... I'm Guys sorry, still but you, apologize but you yeah, just the I, exact same way that we were forced to when we were kids and we get in a fight. Like as adults, you're like you're like kids. It's like so, sorry, sorry, man. Sorry. Dude, yeah, it's that's how it is. But you know, at least you know it's meaningful. I mean, like it actually means <laughs> yeah. you're sorry. Versus women when they're like, "Fine, I'm sorry." God, and you're like, "Oh God, <laughs> don't do that." I can't stand that, dude. Like when it's so like, it's not you know they're just doing it because you're you're like asking them to do it. You're like you're supposed to do it because you mean it. The worst is the people who will go, well, I guess I'm just the worst person ever. You got me. Yeah. I'm just a huge piece of shit. It's like, no, you are, though. You I was like, are. well, right now, I love you, but I don't like you. <laughs> I can't stand that shit. Um, dude. <laughs> okay, one more here. Um, it's just the heat of the moment. Las Vegas thieves steal catalytic converter from the weeder mobile. <laughs> <laughs> they stole it from a dick car. <laughs> you gotta be fucking hard up for money, dude. Be like, hey man, let's let's steal this catalytic converter off the, the Oscar movie. <laughs> you know those Oscar guys wiener mobile. Those guys probably thought they were in the town, like the movie The Town. <laughs> they were really planning this out. It's gonna be the biggest heist ever. It's a catalytic <laughs> converter from the wiener mobile. <laughs> dude was down there in a toboggan and he's like, Steve, look, a collectible. <laughs> Hey man, those catalytic <laughs> converters go for a lot though. I, I think they've had a problem with that. People still in catalytic converters in like big populated cities for a while though. Like I know that I've read, I mean, New York and all those places, but yeah, I just didn't, I mean, a wiener mobile, like, I don't know if you did, you could have picked any other car that probably was going to be a little bit inconspicuous if you were like stealing a catalytic converter. I don't know if they got caught though. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, man, I have family in West Virginia and uh, one of my uncles came down once and I had a Jeep. He's like, <laughs> shit, you thought know, there I swear to God, this is what I come from. He was like, Hey, Michael, Peter, Michael, come over here real quick. I was like, yeah. He's like, Hey man, I'll give you, I'll give you $60 for your catalytic converter. <laughs> he was, he literally yeah. offered, he was like, he's like, it won't make no difference, man. It'll make your car sound louder. Ladies love it, man. You, yeah. you just go down. You don't the street need it at all. Like, I was like, no. <laughs> He's like, and I'll just take, you know, I'll buy your engine block for 85. You don't need that either. <laughs> you can just, you just stop out. You just stop out the floorboard of the car and run like Flintstones. You stay in <laughs> shape. Hey, you still have a vehicle. I should have taken it because, because he stole it anyways. Uh, no, he didn't really. But it says the 27 foot hot dog shaped vehicle was in Sin City this past weekend for a series of events tied to the Super Bowl. Um Joseph Rodriguez told the station he was surprised by what he saw when he got to work. A hot dog truck? No way. <laughs> Imagine like a huge hot dog in the middle of your bay. There's all these other trucks and you got to work on this? <laughs> Dear, the way it was like a hot dog truck? No way. Imagine a hot dog truck in your bay. I might go lay by the, might eat some hay. I think it was him. I think he's the one that did it. He's, he's, the, he's the face of the operator. It was an inside job. Uh, it says, yeah, he especially uh, said it, hot dog truck. No way. When did that get here? I didn't do it. <laughs> Dude, they didn't even report it. Metro police told KLAS that it has not yet received a theft report, but the hotel where it was parked said its corporate division is investigating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, this dude stole a catalytic converter off my hot dog. You go to jail and be like, hey, how'd you get here, man? I stole a catalytic converter from a sausage mobile. <laughs> They're like, what? 
You're gonna get in. You're gonna fit in just fine here. I I knew it was I knew uh, he was the guy because it smelled like hot dog water, and yeah. said Oscar Meyer on the side of it. Sick world uh, we live in. Sick world. <laughs> disgusting bastard. A guy can't even drive a a fucking sausage mobile without worrying about his catalytic converter. The next thing you know, they steal your wife. It's What's bad out on? there, honey. It just is. You can't do nothing. People just don't want to work. That's what that's it is. That's, that's all it is. There's a bunch that of lazy bums out there. That's all it is, man. That's it. We just need to get that government sorted out. Dustin Feeland says, did pre- did it with prey and soon alien mother's milk breakfast. <laughs> I don't uh, that, I, I imagine, What the hell is that? That's all tied in. Mother's milk, I think, is an alien reference. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Mother's milk breakfast. Dustin. Alcohol. Get away from the computer right now and go to the hospital. You stroked. <laughs> I don't was know what those... really are rated though. Yeah. Was it? I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh yeah, Prey was Prey was. Didn't feel like it. it should have been R rated for that awful CGI on that fucking bear, I'll tell you that. We already, that. Up, man, dude. we already read that one, but it's worth mm-hmm. doing twice. Um I want to fuck it. He says, Oh, he watched Halloween Ends too, Corey. Yep. That was with, from earlier. And, and, like and you said it with that fucking face. Like a threat. <laughs> Corey. Corey's <laughs> the next one. We're going to have a good time tonight. Did Ski you like Bank, it? The Bump God. Hi, right, thank What's you, that? Ski Bank. All right, I think we found who stole the fucking Oscar Mayer catalytic converter. He says, happy birthday, Jay. Got some ah cheeseburgers here for you. <laughs> Just came to the dark part of the woods where no one can see you. Come to the dark part of the woods. Holy where no shit. One can John Wayne Gacy, is that you? <laughs> I got some ah cheeseburgers back here, and I got some little art show to show you in the woods. Mm, I do love the smell of cheeseburgers in the world. Hey, you need to go to the drive-thru and order it like that. Like, can I get, oh, cheeseburgers? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, this guy's having an orgasm. I was like, yeah, I just got out of jail. I haven't had one in a long time. <laughs> Looking like a uh, uh, Christian Bale in American Psycho. Bone marrow. <laughs> he goes, oh, oh, my God. They use provolone. <laughs> <laughs> You should imagine if you pulled up to like a Jimmy John's fucking order delivery box. You're like, "Hey, Paul!" <laughs> Just started talking that entire voice even when you picked up the food. If you fun. fucking get arrested, yeah. Um, the the Jimmy John's guys. No, not like last time, man. I had to go to the emergency room. Uh, Caleb Parkinson said, "Good morning, Mormons." By the way, been watching since 2018. Hey, that's what we should rename the show. Good morning, Mormons. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, let's have that happen and get fucking like bolts of lightning coming out for our asshole every morning. Uh, yeah, but uh, peace be unto you and with you. <laughs> oh, fuck. I know fuck. that's Catholic, by the way. So I was like, God damn, Jay, it's not, that's not Mormons. I was What's like, well, I'm sorry story? that I didn't have six wives to show, so I had to say <laughs> peace unto you. Mormons are the pimps of religion. Fucking Duggars aren't here right now. <laughs> One of them's in jail. Forgive me if I can't grind them all up. All I know about Mormons is what I've seen on Netflix, true crime. So I can't say you know the Duggars. That's not offensive. Nineteen thousand yeah, kids and counting, or whatever the fuck yeah. they had. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the only reason that that Thanos should exist, uh, yeah. people like that. Speaking of which, do you know who actually agrees with Thanos? Jay, I don't know. For, uh, uh, Biden? No, he's your favorite. <laughs> he's your favorite. Uh, James Cameron. James Cameron. Jay. James Cameron is reconsidering a few things according to time.com. And he says, in fact, it's the villain who becomes so concerned with waning sources that he uses magic to snap his fingers and demolish half of all life in the universe. That wasn't what he said. Yeah. What James Cameron said was, I can relate to Thanos. I thought he had a pretty viable answer. The problem is no one's going to want to put their hand up to volunteer to be the half that has to go. Well, listen, you know, probably what happened is James Cameron was watching the movie Patton. And he was getting all jacked up. You got to do what you got to do, but no one wants to step up and do what's right, even though it's hard. And that's all <laughs> that was happening. But no, I, you know, I actually heard this before. There was actually, first off, uh, James Cameron, I've, I don't care what he says outside of his movies. I think he's a badass movie maker. As far as what he's, he's got some really shitty takes anyway. Like he's also the one talking about men need to be less testosterone fueled. That we're all like fucking rageful. I mean, I'm like, bitch, I'm a man. I got chest hair and chest face. I got face hair. I got puke. Fuck you. <laughs> I can't stand people like that. Like he's like, no, they need wrong, to be. But haven't I been inside be, of you? They need to be soy boys and shit like that. I don't know. He's had some really shitty takes over the years. But as far as that goes, I mean, there's actually quite a few people that were like, yo, I mean, I guess. I mean, 
if you wipe out half the civilization, then I guess, like, you know, like, we'd have more resources and shit, so. <laughs> I actually don't, I don't disagree with him that bad. As far as movies go, like, Thanos was one of the only villains where I was like, I mean, honestly, like, I kind of agree with him. Like, I, I wouldn't do it, but he's not wrong, you know? I, I, mean, I think, um, I think someone had looked it up before about whether or not that was viable. Like, how he did that, and whether or not that, like, they actually deep-dived into whether or not that would even work. And I think they were like, oh, ultimately, it was never going to work. Like, the idea was, I don't remember. I didn't, I can't, it was all science shit. I don't know. I don't, I fall asleep when they start talking about, like, fucking science stuff. I'm like, yeah, this is, I don't like that shit. Um, I don't think the blasphemy finally got to me. I don't get a weird headache back here. You got an aneurysm coming. That must be the real one. Oh, by the way, speaking of this, I don't know why I was, like, speaking of aneurysms. But uh, I watched uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them for the first, I watched all three of them. Because I was on the Harry Potter kick because I, I played Hogwarts Legacy. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to watch that. I've never seen them. Oh, and it's been out since 2016. Yeah. They made it's three of those the, fucking things? Yeah. The, the first one's good. I mean, it's actually not bad. The second one, um, I don't remember what it was called, but Jude Law was actually really good as Dumbledore. Dude, it, had, it was stacked. It had Jude Law in it. It had uh, Estra fucking I'm not going to jail Miller. It had, um, it had, um, it, it had um, Johnny Depp. And it had a couple other pretty famous actors in it. Oh my god, it was sacked. What happened was is that unfortunately Johnny Depp got replaced as Grindelwald, which he was the main bad guy in the second one. Yeah, who did you get replaced by? Johnny? Uh, no, he got Mads Mickelson. Ralph Fiennes. No, M- Mads Mickelson. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but you know, and, and you know, people to be honest, Mads Mickelson probably did slightly a better job than he did as a villain because Mads Mickelson is just used to it. He's a badass villain. You know, he's obviously the Hannibal TV show, and he was a great villain in Bond. So he kind of slipped into that role pretty easily. And Johnny Depp was kind of new to it, but he still was great. I just think it was, I, I'd like to see that, what would have happened if Johnny Depp had stayed on the cast. The third one wasn't that good, though, to be honest. Secrets of Dumbledore wasn't that good. The second uh, one was all right. Sorry, um, I, 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 I don't know what that I one was know. called. But yeah, it was pretty good. It's not bad. Oh, and then the first one, dude, who should have stayed, Grindelwald, was Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell was the bad guy all the way up to the begin- to the end of the movie. And I'm like, God damn, you missed out the opportunity right there. To have Colin Farrell as your main bad guy, he's great. Was he, was, uh, so he was in the movie, or he was not in the movie? Yeah, so in the first one, it, dude, like Ezra Miller was in it, Colin Farrell was in it. Um, I don't know, the main guy looks familiar. I can't remember his name, though. And then uh, Johnny Depp had a, he was at the very end of the movie. But yeah, dude, it was great. The first one's really good. I'm not I don't telling believe you, like, you. It's really good. They're no. cute, cuddly animals. They, they're magical creatures that live in the forest. Come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck my ass with a spoon. Um, dude, they're not doing any fucking... Did you hear about this, by the way? This is another franchise, speaking of which, that, that you know about that I don't. What? Um, that you enjoy, but I do not whatsoever. Uh, the Hellboy Straight franchise. sex? Uh, yes, exactly. I hate <laughs> oh, that. I, okay, okay. Uh, don't tell my wife. Um, Hellboy, the crooked, <laughs> the crooked man aims to be a radar R folk horn. They're making another Hellboy. Well, with another who? Another one. With who? They That's going to be not, the question. Ron Perlman. Yet. Um, Brian Brian Taylor, who made Crank, Gamer, Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. So you got a great director. Um, Chewy. Crank was good once the the new reboot is titled hellboy the crooked man and it's based on a popular hellboy mini series from 2008 production is starting next month in beluga bulgaria we've learned speaking with the collider director brian taylor says that hellboy the crooked man will most definitely be rated r describing the project as a folk horror movie uh okay, no one's I mean, be right. been named yet for hellboy i can i mean i could see i mean they 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 did terrible with the last hellboy um and unfortunately, that sucks for the guy because I like the guy that played Hellboy in the last movie. The guy from David uh, Harbor. Yeah, it was great, David Harbor. But I think what happened was he didn't take it as seriously as he should have, and it, and it was kind of a jokey way they were trying to take on it. It just didn't work. But Ron Perlman, do you bring him back? He doesn't even need makeup. That motherfucker already looks like a, you know a creature from another planet. Uh, <laughs> but he does, dude. He looks like a crow bagma man. Like he was frozen in the cave days, and he came out, and he like just looks like that. But yeah, he's a little older now, which is the only problem. But yeah, if they do it like that, that looks scary as shit. That uh, that would work. An R-rated, uh, like folksy horror film. Yeah, yeah. but see, I've Can't said that before. They could have done that with Ghost Rider. They could have done that with uh, Doctor Strange. Those are those should be almost like borderline all the way scary horror movies, and they did. So hopefully, this is going to be good. Yeah, I, uh, I, they, I bring Clyde Barker in that bitch. 
That would be fucking awesome. I've, I've still never seen a Hellboy movie, though. But, I mean, the I don't know. Good. The guy who directed Ghost Rider Experience Adventure, it's Mom and Dad was okay. That was the Nicolas Cage horror movie. Yeah, that was all right. Uh, Crank was great. Crank fucking ruled. So maybe there's a chance. I don't know. I can't get into Hellboy. It's just it's too unrealistic. I, it depends on how they do it. I don't know. And it depends on who they cast as Hellboy, too, because you got to have a charm about you. And I don't, I mean, I don't know. They should get because you can say what you want about Ron. Ron Perlman's also another crazy that says a lot of shit outside of his acting, but he's still a good actor and he's got charm to him. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't mind David Harbor. I've never liked Ron Perlman. It's just his face. But again, it's not a fucking series that I watch, so I should just shut the fuck up when it comes down to that. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I can have opinions. You know, am I? You know, am I? Oh God! I've um, we watched that. Caleb yeah, we Martin read that. Says good morning, Mormons. We read that one. Oh, I did. Oh, that's yeah. right. I forgot about the Mormons stuff. Um, Caleb also asked. Oh, and happy birthday, Jay. Have you hey, seen you. on the line? Uh, no. Is that about cocaine? <laughs> that is a Mel Gibson movie. I watched on the line. Uh, I watched I it. I haven't seen it. Back on Thanksgiving, movie sucks, but Mel Gibson's off awesome in it as usual. Uh, yeah. The writing just fucking suck, but he's a, yeah, he's a radio yeah. DJ, and this guy calls in. He's like, "I hate you," and I got your family, and he's like, "Oh fuck!" Basically, it's shitty ransom. Oh, it's like it sounds like a Howard Stern regular day. Yeah, probably, probably yeah. exactly. Well, you know that, that sucks, man. I, it really is sad. Every time I I think of Mel Gibson, of all the great movies that we were robbed ever after all that shit went down with him, it just sucks, man. That, I mean, I'm not. Saying, I'm glad he's still doing something. He's working. But he's always like he's always walking on eggshells because you know if they could never really cast him in some giant big production movie, I got yeah. they would just they would just be scared to, and it, it's sad. Yeah, he's always on VOD now. Andrew Keith said this man said too realistic. My guy, a lot of movies realistic. How many euphemisms are you gonna throw in there? Hey, dude, <laughs> uh, chief, a lot of movies. Hey, buddy, a lot of movies. No, I realize that. I'm just saying I, I, I'm not. I can't do. It's a thing with me. I can't do like. Hardcore fantasy movies, like that's why I could never could get into Harry Potter, uh, mm. Hellboy. Just something about it. He just seems like Shrek to me. It's strange. I can't get into it. Um, don't know why. I'm not shit on it. Shrek's saying, cousin. I can't get into it, bro. Yeah, it's just um, that's just who I am. You know. Don't fucking judge me. I love everybody. Shut up. <laughs> Quit taxing my gig so hardcore, Cruster. God. Um, dude, I gotta show you this, and then we will get into the Rocky list uh, here in a minute. Uh, but I have to show you this. I just came across it. I, I'm watching all the Children of the Corn movies, and I, I was looking up one of the directors on IMDb. Dude, I'm actually having a blast with it. One, two, and three, they all have something worth watching in them. Uh, two and three specifically are that's fucking like, hilarious. That, that, to me, that's like when you like the smell of a porta potty. For some reason, you found it. You just keep going back to it. You like to smell other men's shit. <laughs> They're not great. They're not great. I do like to smell other men's shit. They're not it's great. Okay. But. They the kills are fucking awesome, dude. They're really fun to watch. Yeah. But I'm looking up one of the directors. And I'm like, what else has this guy directed other than this piece of shit? And I found this TV show called Nightman. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah, I, I'm. It's a superhero guy. Like it was like yeah, it was terrible. Oh yeah. So I never heard of it. I just saw the picture yeah. of it. And I went, what in the unholy fuck is this? And then yeah. someone sent me a, a video of the intro on Twitter, and I wanted to watch it with you on the show. I've seen it. Um, yeah, I, I watched it when it was new. I, I've never seen it before. Because I didn't even watch I, it when he sent it to me. Well, because I was uh, I was I was still collecting comic books hardcore. And I'm like, oh, cool, Nightman. I'm like, I'm gonna check that out because it looks like a <laughs> Batman thing. And holy shit, it sucked. All I know is that he's a jazz musician turned Batman. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. A... Right, I think they even made a limited comic book. I think I don't know. I have to look. Uh, I watched ten seconds of this and I thought I'm saving it to watch together. So here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's like the brave part music. <laughs> it's the dude from the Lost Boys. <laughs> I, this oh, looks kind of cool. Pick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Stop it! Yeah. My pants. No, look, he's jumping off the comic book pages. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, he can fly. <laughs> I love it, dude. It's so corny. 
Kittred. You've never Dude, seen it. It sounds like area. someone's trying to bring a snake out of a fucking basket. That music. Nightman. I I gotta I, I gotta give it up to him, dude. His costume looks pretty dope. I like his <laughs> costume. I think it looks pretty good. It kind of looks like Tim Drake's Nightwing, but he's got like a little laser thing on his eye. That's you know he can't ever look up to the sky though because he could get arrested for that because he could blind pilots. It's a little laser pointer. But yeah, I <laughs> dude, I I uh, I do those intros. I miss those intros. They're so fucking corny and cheesy, but I love it when they look at the camera. They're like. <laughs> it's always they're always doing something by day. They're like looking at mail and they're like, yeah, it's it's like the, the <laughs> news host, something. like yeah. when it's like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I remember watching that movie. It sucked ass, dude. It was or that show was fucking terrible. And that's why I don't think it lasted I, a couple episodes. But yeah, dude, it was awful. Someone said, "Motherfucker's a jazz musician and he could afford that car." <laughs> that's true. You got a good point. I doubt they. Yeah, he's got. He's a great. He's a fine. He's a great jazz musician, not just a good one, a great one, because people listen to jazz every day. <laughs> just the music what, gets you. What was? Why did it sound like it was Irish? Do what I was saying. Do it's. I was saying when I. It sounded like a dude was trying to get a snake out of a basket, like, <laughs> like. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, I don't know. It was terrible. I think what they should have had was Night Shift as their background music. By the way, I will just point this out, and I, I mean, of course, it can be any color, but you would just think a jazz mu musician, the dude would be black. Uh, and it's like he's a white, blonde-haired guy that looks like he's a detective in, like, Miami Vice. Well, it was the 80s. <laughs> that was, was 90s. the 90s, I guess. No. Yeah. No, no, that's true. That's I'm not point. saying I mean, that you could be white and do it. I'm just saying I feel like it would be better suited for, a, you know, someone who was of color. But I don't know. I could be wrong. No, that's actually. That's not racist, point, by actually. the way. I'm just going to point that out. I just, if you hear jazz, I feel like it's an appropriation. It's like they just took a white guy and stuck him in there. <laughs> and it's basically Nightcrawler with a cyborg's eye is what you got going yeah, on. Yeah, it's like that. somebody told them, like, hey, you know what? We got this great show. We have a black dude going to play him, though. He's like, no, no, that's not going to work. In the 90s. Like, <laughs> Excuse me. Have you ever white heard of man, put the white man in with, like, fucking blonde, girly, curly locks. <laughs> that's not a bad point. But, dude, I just – that that's that music is probably what would happen if the guy who did uh, uh, the Winnie and the Pooh uh, Blood and Honey movie got the rights to uh, Braveheart. <laughs> That'd yeah. be the music to Braveheart. Do, 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 do. I can't fucking get out of dude, my that, head. Dude, that – I get so – that brings back memories. I remember seeing that, and I was like, holy shit. Because I really well, – I was I, – I liked the, the uh, costume, but it was just fucking terrible. Have you ever heard of Bible Man? Yes. Yes, I have heard of Bible Man. <laughs> Um, I that's have, still. I, I think Bible Man is still on. No way. I think it is. I think I'm no not like way, dude. I swear to God, I think I might be wrong, but I swear Bible Man. I don't know. I just pulled up his intro too, because everybody said when I when I when I put that on on Twitter, everybody's like, "Dude, you guys have got to see Bible Man," and I've never heard of him, but apparently he has toys and fucking everything. All right, here's Bible Man's intro. Miles Peterson. A man who had it all. Wealth, status, success. Still, something was lacking. <laughs> Miserable, alone, his spirit. Beaten. That's what I do when I look at Miles Peterson. That's what I do when I look at my tax return. <laughs> <laughs> He's having the worst and fucking in diarrhea ever. Hour, the words of a single book began to change his life. He just found that in the dirt. Miles Peterson so felt like, a I hate burning God. desire to know God. Inspired by the word of He's God. He's getting abducted. With unyielding it's a UFO. Miles no, dude, it's a cop. evil in the name of God. Yeah, it's a cop helicopter. Bible man. We're on the floor. What'd he say? What the hell? Somebody getting sued. Those are lightsabers. Oh my lordy! <laughs> the height is who George Lucas is. Shield of faith, helmet of salvation. Oh yeah, that looks good. That guy's real. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Did you just come? No, when you watched the Bible Man trailer? Just, it, it's chalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, I know about that. I just forgot. Oh god, dude, it's so cringy. First off, <laughs> they have lightsabers, which is yeah, I don't know how they didn't get a, like sued for that. And then second off, 
He just found like a really nice looking Bible in the dirt and mud out of nowhere. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of the same plot to Children of the Corn, right? But it was a—I like that it was a paper Bible, which would have degraded over time. But they didn't have money for a hardcore for a, for a hardcover Bible. They're more expensive yeah. on Amazon. But uh, dude, but why is he doing violence? Hasn't he because the, because the gays are getting married? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go to violent oh, war with them. Have you heard of the Crusades? <laughs> Oh my God! That's by the yeah. way. There's other. I'm glad. Look, I'm glad. Like, I'm sure Christian. Okay, quit. Go on. Fucking kids all over America love that show when it was on. But you know, I just think it's it's kind of weird. It's just it's a really cringy ass like attempt at a. I don't know. Like, let's make our own separate thing. I don't know. Hell like, who the fuck way. watched that and really enjoyed it? Like, that's the kind of stuff that a cult mom that doesn't let her kids go outside and see the sun, like flowers in the attic woman that would make her kids like in front of like exactly. like uh, coloring books and shit that's all about jesus and the bible and that's all they read every day all day and she'd put that on like y'all earned a treat today we're watching 100%. bible man let's all gather around and get the popcorn mm. that's what and that like, uh the girl we both dated uh britney's parents probably made them watch it's like yeah, no, you dude, can't but... watch ninja turtles the ninja turtles are gay no they you did i think bible they did man. that first area was 1995 so i'm definitely thinking that they did they had a little kid i'm sure they did I can't. I just can't. I mean, I understand. Like, what was it on TV? Like, certainly they no. Just it was on, like, no. DVDs that was on. That was like, on there. That was on the the Christian Broadcasting Network. Okay, well, you got to pull in the youth, right? You got you got to pull in the youth, and that's that. And DC Talk. You remember DC Talk? Um, uh -huh. What will people do when they find out I'm a Jesus freak? <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> no, no. But I want to know. I want to know oh. about it because that just pulled me into the Holy Spirit right there. Yeah, no, it's, it's a bad yeah, I mean, as a bi I don't know how bi actually Bible Man got canceled, but you know, surprisingly, shockingly, it's not around anymore. But I don't know how Bible Man just didn't like convert all the country to, I mean, because he's a superhero, because you believe in God, you get armored up in the name of the Lord and you go yeah. out there and strike them gays down. I keep praying, but nothing's happening. Kitty guts, by the way. I know this, but those are extremists. Those are like the crazy fucking, like, um, who are they? The ones that say they hate gays and they hope they die. The, like the, uh, uh, his, the West Church, the Baptist, whatever the fuck they are, the most hated family in America. Those are uh, cons. Westboro. They're, they're cons. That's the yeah, ones. Westboro. Yeah, they're the worst versions of it for sure. They're mm -hmm. the extremes, the triple double extreme, extra nougat. Uh, six 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 says Jay, can you slender do slender man trying to buy drugs? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> hey man, what's going on? Thank you for meeting me behind this alleyway in the dark. Nothing suspicious going on. Hey man, you got any stuff that make you get like, head go goo 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 goo? When you smoke it, like cigarette tastes in it. Like that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Keep on the air, though. Give it to me behind me back. There you go. Oop, there we go. Go smoke it, man. I don't know what kind of drugs. I would imagine he would just be buying weed, not like going and getting like hard shit. Like, give me that meth. The ground up uh, souls of children. Um, yeah, he smokes that. Possibility. Let's roll it up and smoke it. It'll be fun. <laughs> just roll it up and smoke it, yo. Um, dude, By the way, this... does it? How many of you all in the chat remember that show, Nightman? I'm just curious, like, how many of you guys I'll like put, remember seeing it? I'll put up a poll, actually. I forgot to do a poll today. Sometimes when you're just having fun, it's hard to remember to do stuff. Dude, I'm, like, that is some of the cringiest shit. I, ooh, I, I'm, you know how you get, like, secondhand embarrassment when you, when you watch something? Like, I didn't even make the fucking show. Like, Bible Man, I didn't even make it. And I feel embarrassed. Like, I feel like That's I made I it and I put it out in front of somebody. I get that way every time I edit our videos too. Dude, that's the worst. I couldn't do it. I couldn't look. I hate watching. I couldn't even watch our videos back. Fuck that. I hate watching us. Nightman. All right. I'll be right back though. I got to go pee pee in the toilet. Okay. All right. I was putting up the poll. Poll. <laughs> Wiener joke. Hot time. Summer in the city. Pull your pants down and they look so pretty. That's not how the song goes. Not at all but i'm I'm not lying to you guys i definitely recommend i think children of the corn might be the the most underrated shitty sequel franchise out there like the original sucks balls for sure but and it just ends when it ends like literally nothing happens they're just like we ran out of money and they just get up and just like walk away like literally i'll show it to you fuck it i'll just show it to you right here if you guys don't follow us on twitter uh or pay attention and why would you i put this up the other day 
It's literally the ending, just the last 30 seconds of Children of the Corn, the first movie. Watch this shit. It literally just ends. It's like they actually run out of money while filming the movie. I've never seen anything like it in my fucking life. All right. Ready? Here we go. What are we going to do now? Send her a get well card from Seattle. Let's get the hell out of here. Well, you can hear a grunt when she picks up the kid. Ugh. What do we do? We walk this way. I don't know which way is the exit. Then the music just starts. It's like the end of the fucking Oscars. Where are we going? Well, here's a car full of corn. What are we gonna do now? I just—it literally just fucking ends. With no explanation whatsoever. <laughs> I'll right, play it one more time just to back up. Listen, you could literally, it's so awkward and quiet, you can hear her grunt when she picks up the kid. Oh, shit. Too far. Just hang on. <sighs> Somebody play the fucking music or something. Shit. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> fucking zombies all of a sudden. I can't. <laughs> Stephanie said they're actually still walking to this day. That's true. <laughs> what the shit, man? They actually just threw that shit up there. Oh, God, I love it. I love it. I really do. Um, But no, dead ass serious, man. I think that that movie is so bad. The opening's badass. The opening's one of the coolest horror openings of all time. When those kids just massacre everybody inside of a goddamn Denny's. But the sequels, that's where it's fucking at. I, I had no idea. No one ever thought to watch Children of the Corn 2. Why would you? But I watched it, and I was like, this shit is pure grade A entertainment. It's not good, but it feels like a late uh, one of the... It feels like They all feel like Nightmare 4 and 5 like a mix of nightmare four and five the the kills are absolutely butt crack crazy insane and they're fun and the movie's not good but they got campy fun moments in them watch children of the corn two and three i swear to fucking god you're gonna love it you too you fuck i don't want to i'll eat your ass i don't want to okay <laughs> or is right. it a threat I, or or a, or a promise i don't know i don't want that's like i do i couldn't I, I i think didn't we did we do a man versus movie in children of the corn no, thank God. No. There's ten of them. We wouldn't survive. No, we did. Uh, I thought we did ten. Uh, we did like, was it a wrong turn? Uh, wrong turn, and there were six. Well, oh yeah, that was. Fun. Never mind. Imagine three more. God damn. <laughs> yeah, I think we got too old to do man vs. movies. It was just like, well, that, that's a year off my life, dude. I, I knew it was bad when I was fucking eating pizza off the floor like David Hasselhoff. Like that's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, got, we, that. Uh, we were fucking trash, and I was like, you trying to eat pizza off the floor. I was like, oh, it just it was like a Wendy's commercial. <laughs> yeah, we tried that uh, that Domino's cheeseburger pizza and had pickles and shit on it. I was good, though. I liked it. Yeah, I don't think I was like, I don't think there was anything they could have sent us we wouldn't have liked in that. No, that's true. It could, have, it could have been a chocolate dick, and we would eat the shit out of it. Be like, this is really good banana split. We're like, dude, I think it's a dick. Either way, I mean, I'll take that right now. I'm kind of hungry now that you mention it. Dude, mm. check this out. I found this today perusing the internets and it makes me smile you're gonna fucking love this this is the coolest fucking kid on the planet that's scary they're in like one of those uh uh shoguns you know or the hibachis. oh yeah yeah Check hibachi yeah <laughs> i like it one of his hair was on fire when he turned around <laughs> yeah I slapped that kid in the face. You get close to me. That looks like a children of the corn kid. <laughs> he looks like he looks like uh uh Dave Ferris as Michael Myers in the opening. Yeah, yeah, he does. What I, <laughs> my name is Michael Myers. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, I meant to say we did I don't think we we talked about it uh last week. I think we got obviously we got distracted. Um we were talking about the big piece of shit that Bam Margera had become. Oh yeah, yeah. That all it was was that he had basically uh claimed that Priscilla Presley had given him a literal like given him 
Elvis, one of Elvis Presley's robes and a ring. And Priscilla Presley came out. She's like, no, I just met him. I was at dinner and his friend brought him over and was like, he was like, can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, sure. And then all of a sudden he posts on Instagram, like we're best friends. And I gave him Elvis his shit. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I, it's just so weird. Like, what is he doing? I don't even know what he's doing. That kid, that guy needs to go on a dark retreat like Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> hey, that should be ending any time now. So we might find out what's next. Dude, that was, I feel bad, but I don't. He went up to, he apparently went up to Yellow Wolf, which is a rap rocker. Mostly wasn't that the, I thought he was friends with Priscilla's or wasn't her son. Yeah. Yeah. It was her son. Yeah. But afterwards he went up to his, his friend, Yellow Wolf. Yeah. That's um, right. He was on a Madden soundtrack once. Um, and I think he rapped something on Travis Barker. I don't know. I, I, mm. I'm not sure who he is, but that's seller. Yeah. He went up to him and he said, he get, Yellow Wolf posted on his Instagram. He was like, my friend, Bam, who's, who was hanging out with Priscilla Presley. She, she gave him this ring and he yeah. gave it to me. And Bam allegedly gave it to him because he thought he was the new king of rock and roll. I'm like, bitch, this is why nobody lets you decide things. Yeah. Yellow Wolf, the new fucking Elvis. Are, I will fucking die shoving burritos down my own goddamn throat. And I don't know why that's what I went with, but that's what I'll do. Sounds good. Sounds like it's a, a like the Yellow Wolf is the next Elvis Presley. I like it. Good, good take. It's man. over. Give him the give him, might as well let him move in the house. But then, yeah, she was like, I don't know. She was like, my son asked if his friend could come over, and this yeah. weird fucking guy kept taking pictures of me and telling me all about his troubles and shit like that. And the next thing I know, he's posting pictures of me online saying that I gave him Elvis his fucking ring. Yeah. It's like some guy that you invite over to your mom's house and she's never met before. And then acts and then stole like a bunch of Xanax or some shit from her medicine cabinet. And then she was like, where's my Xanax? And it's like, <laughs> I don't know. And then you ask your friend like, dude, did you steal Xanax from my mom? And he's like, yeah, she gave them to me. She said, <laughs> I, you know, I, I needed them. And I'm like, she don't even <laughs> fucking know you. <laughs> And she just Pretty gave much. you a, I don't know. Yeah, dude, Bam's By out way, of his Priscilla's mind. Priscilla's the wife. Lisa Marie's the daughter. I think we were confused about that before. Yeah, I said Pr Priscilla was the one that was posted. Lisa Marie's the one that passed away. Right, right. We were confused last time we talked about it. That's why Oh, did we say her. Lisa Marie? Oh, yeah, I can't. Maybe I, we well, did. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but either he, way, yeah, it's it's it, he's, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I don't know. I know that he needs help. But you, at the same time, I, I, like, I do feel bad for him. But then at the same time, I'm like, dude, you've had so many fucking chances. Like there's people people that have tried to help you so many times over the years, and it's like you just use people. It's almost like you come across as someone that just uses people for clout. hundred so, percent. Fuck you. I need a sick doctor now for my six hundred pound life on his ass. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like starting to look. You're, you're, you're starting to get like filled. pounds, but... and you'll be a candidate for weight loss surgery. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> uh, "What? I don't know who said it too. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't really. I never really was a huge fan of Bam Margera, but I don't." Says that Ryan Dunn wasn't even his best friend. Like he was like he keeps on saying that oh he's still recovering from the alcohol abuse because of Ryan Dunn. And somebody's like yeah Ryan Dunn wasn't like his super good awesome friend. Like he keeps acting like that's an excuse why he has to keep doing it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just wouldn't trust. It. Just in general, I wouldn't trust anything that guy says. It's a bummer that happened to him because that that that, that was a good time in our lives. The old jackass, the Bam Show was huge back in the yep. day. Um, yep. All right, one more news story before we get to our Rocky ranking. Um. I'll double check and make sure nothing's happened since, but this is crazy, dude. Blumhouse has launched a new subsidiary to produce original horror video games. Hmm. Um, they're partnering with a bunch of people who are going to use the Blumhouse model of making not, not they're cutting the fat and making not cheap games, but cheaper than most games. And they're going to hmm. try to do what they do with movies and release a bunch of horror games that cost less than other games. Hmm, I don't know. That's a bold move, uh, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off because that could be really bad. That means it could be lower quality and they just flood the market. Yeah, like indie games and stuff like that. The exciting thing about it for me, though, is that they're getting ready to pair up with James Wan's company, Atomic Monster, and all the IP these two have, we could be seeing some really fucking cool uh, horror games. Like, I know mm -hmm. they, they don't have the rights to Halloween anymore, but they have the rights to a lot of really fun shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe like, it might be cool. So that could be neat. But like you said, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could say that about movies, too. Maybe they'll put out a bunch of shitty, cheap stuff. but Or maybe they'll just spend money on what they need to and, and make good games. Like Hopefully. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't trust it, though. I just feel like it's like a money-making thing. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like how, how can we make money like really fast and give out low-quality products? Uh, we'll be like Walmart. 
It says that they're going to uh, target indie budget games below $10 million to enable innovation well, and pushing creative boundaries. That's not, okay, I take that back. Some of the, there, There's some really good indie games that have come out that are horror-based. So, I mean, if they go that route, it might be good. I don't know. We'll just wait. We'll, we'll wait, okay? Hold our judgments down, all right? Calm down. Anything could happen. But, I mean, dude, why don't we? I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, why don't we have a Halloween game? Why don't we have a Scream game? Like, these would fucking crush, and nobody's doing it. No one. I, I think it's had to do with, I think uh, a COD is maybe a, a hold up on a lot of it. Possibly. Maybe. Because if you don't, if, right he, if he, if like, he's like real protective over the, the story in the movies of Michael Myers. So he probably would like, I don't know, they don't want to have, give them too much creative freedom in the, uh, in the, in a game. I don't know. This is true. This 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 could be true. I don't know, but hopefully we see some good shit out of it. We'll find out one day. <laughs> um, let me go here and share my entire screen with you, Fox. Uh, that one. Yes. So, um, oh wait, there's one more before we do that. I have to talk about because that's that ties right directly into this, dude. More evidence and more reason for me not to go see motherfucking Creed three. Um is this story right here. So Stallone shared and then deleted an Instagram post, which had his ideas for the scrapped Rocky seven movie. Now I don't, I'm not saying that a Rocky seven should have happened. Right. Yeah. But if you guys don't know what's happened with the whole Creed thing, Stallone said, he's not gonna have anything to do with Creed three right on the heels of him saying that Erwin Winkler and the producers behind the Creed and Rocky movies fucked him over. Like it's mm -hmm. his franchise. I mean, he wrote it direct, all that stuff. It's when you think of Rocky, obviously you think of Stallone, but he did a bunch of stuff behind the scenes as well. And he says they, they dicked him on the paperwork and he has no rights to anything Rocky. And then the next thing, you know, they're making a Creed three. They don't even mention Stallone. And he says, mm -hmm. he's not going to be in Creed three because he was like, I have no part of that. I just have different ideas about the character. I like my heroes to go through things, but not to get like enveloped by that kind of uh, uh, lifestyle. Uh, yeah. Like not lifestyle, but like, um, fuck, I don't want him to, to plunge to that depth of bad, yeah. bad stuff. I don't know what that means for the, forgive me if I'm wrong, sir, but didn't you make Rocky five? Shut your mouth. <laughs> I guess he does something worse. But I just, I think he's gotten dicked over. And the fact that, like, he brought all these new people in to make the Creed movies and yeah. they're super successful. And they're the, now they're like, ah, we don't give a fuck what you think. Now it's Creed. You know what I mean? I just, I can't support that. that well, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think they've, they've treated him like shit. There's no doubt. I didn't want to see Creed 3. I just feel like it's lost its steam. I yeah. mean, and even I, before, even before I knew what, what was going on with Stallone, I, like, dude, I didn't even, I, I really did. I, I saw Creed one and two, and it was good. But I, I wanted to see it for Rocky. For I mean, that's why a lot of people were there. I mean, they wanted to see fucking Sylvester Stallone reprising the role of Rocky. I mean, you can, I mean, obviously Michael B. Jordan's a great actor, or whatever. But I mean, I you know, I just I didn't care. I just don't care. And then it got kind of it got stupid in Creed two, because then you had yeah. like Ivan Drago's son, and I was like, holy shit, what is going on? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's what I'm saying. Like. We, he's there you didn't kill him off what are you just like oh he's he doesn't care about boxing anymore i guess he's in a home what are you gonna do you know what i mean what i gotta focus doing? on my restaurant my kid needs me <laughs> um so Ro rocky posted this stallone rocky stallone posted this and he said this was the beginning excerpts of screen of the screenplay for rocky seven sadly it will never happen but it's something i want to share with the diehard fans keep punching and it's there's not a lot going on there. It's just him at the uh, oh shit. Where'd we go here? Fuck. Hang on. Um, my computer's being a fucking butthole, and it won't. But if you see the notes there, you can read the handwritten notes, and it, it's talking about like Rocky's in his restaurant, and he has this flashback sequence where he puts on a record, and he walks up to Adrian, and he's like, "You like that song?" And she's like, "Yes." And he's like, "I know." <laughs> like in Rocky's, but the fact uh, yeah. that he had he was working on a Rocky Seven, and he was allegedly going to be. Um, I don't know if he was going to be fighting. It said he's going to be fighting for the neighborhood that he grew up in that made him. And also he was going to be mentor to a 27 year old boxer named Chucho the Mutt. Ah. That was going to be the story. Chucho um, the Mutt? Chucho the Mutt. God damn, he um, sounds like an Aristocat character. <laughs> Beat up! <laughs> I don't know. Beat up. Well, this was going to be actually Rocky 7. It wasn't having anything to do with Creed. Right, and it sounds like it was going to be a Creed-like story. I, listen, I, I, I look. If he wanted to make Rocky fucking twenty-eight, I don't care if he was one hundred five years old and he's walking out there with a you know a goddamn walker and fighting people. I'd watch the shit out of that. 
And so it's, it's sad. I, yeah, they just fucked him around. They fucked him over. I don't know. That's just what happens in Hollywood, I guess. Big yeah. surprise. And maybe it's not Michael B. Jordan's fault. I'm not saying it's Michael B. Jordan's fault. I mean, there's a lot of moving wheels and stuff like that. But it just seems like Creed was a big movie when it came out. And Stallone, the Rocky franchise, were the reason people went to see that movie. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sure who's who's behind this fuckery. Yeah. But it, it might not like just they're... be Michael B. Jordan. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's just it it's like just they... the corporation that fucked him. That's what it is. Yeah. And it's yeah, exactly. It seems like they're dicking him over. So I'm not gonna see the movie. And honestly, like the story for me is pretty complete at this point. Yeah. Um for sure. I'm also but well, I I'm and it's not because I'm I'm not trying to you know, virtually, or you know, I'm, I'm, I'm standing for, I'm standing by and standing up for Sylvester Stallone because he's really going to notice me. No, it's not that. I just don't think the movie looks interesting. Yeah, and like, I won't be able to enjoy on, it. I, yeah, you know, like I just won't. But um, let's see here. All right. So with that story being said, we are going to rank. We are going to rank it hard in your butt. Let's do it. Let's get it going. The Rocky franchise, Francisco. Um department stores fuck where is it god damn it there it is okay it's gonna be all right um all right what so how many movies are there there's five there's six rocky movies. there's six rocky movies, movies. So eight, eight I, movies I, total i didn't even put i didn't put creed in nine. Oh, you want to just, i'll just do the rockies i'm good with that yeah i just put I, well the reason why is because he is rocky in the movies but it's not centered on him i only did the all movies right, that were centered on rocky that's fair hey let's go all the way hey look at us go for it <laughs> what I know what your number six is going to be you, then. Well, you I knock so. him down. Why don't you try knocking me down? My ring's <laughs> outside. Yeah. You should have left that punk where you found him in the gutter, Brock. Uh, and I suit. That's my. That, that, yeah. Well, you might. You already got it. Yeah. You knew it was going to be Rocky Five. Yeah. I hadn't even said it yet. I was just like quoting lines. But yeah, it's Rocky Five. <laughs> Look, Rocky. I, I've grown to like it a little bit more over the years. I, I love the soundtrack and, and some of the acting is really good. I just I fucking hate. That he had everything, and I know it's the story, but it feels like it, it like it didn't feel. It just went backward. Like he lost everything because of fucking. You let Polly make your financial decisions for you. That's like letting Ray Charles drive as your Uber. What the fuck do you mean? And like so, and then they lost everything, and they're basically like homeless again. And he's like a bomb kind of, and he's now walking around the neighborhood. These people, like I just, I hate that shit. It's like you. It's like there was no originality. It was just like we go from Rocky One back to Rocky One. I mean, and I hate. And by the way, I didn't even like the fi the fact that the final climactic scene of the movie takes place on the streets. I don't like that. I want it to be in the fucking ring against Tommy Gunn, so he could get. If it, then imagine if he got a big giant purse. It was like a three million dollar purse, and it got his family back out of poverty again. And I, then you end the movie like that. I'm like, all right, I'm good. Yep, I'm 100 percent there with you. Obviously, my my choice is the same. It's going to be Rocky Six, Rocky. Oh, five. I thought I yours was. I thought you liked it. No, I'm thinking of Cody. Cody likes Rocky Five now better than he used to. He's a liar and a yeah, whore. He is. And his mother dress isn't funny. No, yeah, dude. I I think that the same exact thing. It's it, my the worst sin it commits in Rocky Five is it makes him out to be a bad dad. Like it yep. makes him seem like a shitty dad because his son's going through all this stuff at school and everything you said again. It pisses me off that we went through. We saw him rise from nothing, and mm -hmm. then he kind of falls back down into a little bit because he spends his money too fast. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? He's like, "Hey, uh, I'll buy a watch for you. I'll buy a watch for Paulie too." You know, he's like, "If you want to have a good time, you got to keep a good or what is it? You like to have a good time? Well, you got to have a good watch or whatever it was." Yeah, he buys a fucking robot. Happy birthday, Polly. I was like, "What is he? Yeah. he spend like a million dollars on that? I don't know. He's so stupid." Yeah, he spends all his money from Rocky One and Two. Then he has to work at the meatpacking plant because they didn't pay fighters like they do now back then. No. So then he has to go back. And then Rocky Three, he's rich again. He's wearing a suit. He, he's he's lost it. Rocky Four, he's got it all back again. And then yep. Rocky Five, we start out after that great. He basically saved the fucking world, and now he's broke. It's so mm -hmm. depressing. You know what I mean? I know. It sucks. It's but, like uh, real life. I want to escape. <laughs> <laughs> it was like watching the. Is... It was like watching an MC Hammer documentary. Yeah. You're at the height of your career and now you're fucked. Yeah, and there's no redemption. But um what was that? Uh and and it's so sad that Paulie's the one that fucks him over. Like he yeah. he messes up his money. And then on top of that, they move to the school, the kid's getting picked on. And instead of taking care of his kid and being a dad, he just finds this dude with a mullet in the street and he's like, Hey, I fucking love you. <laughs> he's yeah. like, I love you more than my own son. And Yo, it's just sad, dude. I just I hate how they did Rocky in that movie. Well, they also gave like he didn't it wasn't even just that he gave him he gave him the fucking cufflink that Mickey gave him. Instead of giving it to his son, he gave it to goddamn Tommy shit ass gun. Yeah, exactly. It's like I don't want, I want nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, you remind me of of 
You know, you may not even be my kid. Thing. Who knows? Yo, Adrian, is this my kid? Get him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You seem like a pussy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, my – that's – that's yeah, some people like it, but it's not my favorite. My number five is going to be Rocky Balboa, uh, which is the uh, sixth entry into the movie. I like it. You know, it's fun. I mean, it, like, I like it better than Rocky Five because it feels like he's more stable in this one. Like, he's got a restaurant. It's sad to see that Adrian's not there, but – it, it, and I like I love it's got one of the best speeches of all time in a movie or one of the best speeches when he talks to Milo Bentham. I can't even say his last name. Bentham that's playing his son. Yeah. And he's like, you know, if you know you want to go out and get what you worth like that. Like, I love that fucking speech. Dude. Like that speech is great. Um, And I like the fact that he does come back for one more fight. It's like I feel like Rocky Balboa was the ending that people or the the true uh, ending to the series if there was going to be an ending to the series that was should have been rocky five i feel like sylvester stallone got that i feel like he understood there was a kind of a backlash for rocky five maybe it wasn't as loud as it could have been but he, he probably got it maybe even he regretted writing it like that so this way you get to see rocky balboa in the ring one more time and then you have this final wrap up to the series he, he repairs the damage that is with his son his son's kind of become like a pussy kind of like corporate cocksucker and he pulls him out of that i think it's well done and uh, and then uh yeah it, i don't like that there's two endings because i also don't think uh antonio tarver i think i don't was it tarver who played the bad guy in this i yeah, can't remember tarver. yeah i fucking dude that, that guy you could have picked any other guy to be the champion to like to pass the legacy on to and i've been fine with it because i don't I think tarver was like the guy i know that's not his name in the movie it's not tarver but um right I just didn't like the. I don't like the character. He just seemed like a typical bad guy, like an asshole. Yeah, so, he really, he really didn't. He's probably if you rank the villains, he would probably be the worst villain. Of he is one hundred percent. He's forgettable. And he didn't, yeah, and he didn't even do a bad job. Just compared to the all the other villains were over the top, and he was just like a, an athlete. You know what yeah. I mean? He really had, didn't have much to him other than that. But I guess they wanted to make it realistic, so I get that for sure. Yeah. Um, I was trying to see who. Yes, Stallone directed Rocky Balboa too. Mm -hmm. Has he directed? I don't think he's directed every movie in the Rocky franchise. Maybe he I has. Don't know. Um, no, he's he the first. Oh, oh. <laughs> John John G. Alveson directed the first one, uh, oh. but no, uh, my number five is going to be Rocky three. Yeah. Um, and by the way, as soon as you get to number five on this list, we're talking about movies that are probably nines and tens for us. Yeah, they're all great. They're all fucking amazing. So this is not not disrespectful at all. To put this here, but the only problem I have with Rocky Three is it it just feels like I guess it it feels like it's trying to recreate the magic of the other two movies with like this like new tech like a new sheen over top of it. I don't know. Mm. And I hate how Rocky has kind of lost it. And that's that's yep. the point of the story, I know, but like he kind of I don't want to say he becomes a pussy, but he he you you find out that Mick has been has been giving him fluff fighters since he, he he won. He's at the top of the world and he's the champ and he's famous and he's got, once again, he's out there just dropping money fucking left and right. Mm -hmm. And then you find out Mick's been giving him fluff Oof. fighters to keep his status up. And when Rocky finds out, he's like, what? Yeah. You there? <laughs> um, I'm better than you, Mick. <laughs> and then they have to, you, you have to find that great turning point of the movie that great yeah. when Rocky's heads down and he picks it up. And it's unfortunately Mickey dies, which I fucking hate. Yeah. But when he dies and Stallone's crying, I hate that. Fucking hate that scene. He kind of goes for the Oscar a little bit there, but still yet it's sad as fuck. Dude, it was he was really turning it on. He's like, Mick, Mick, because please don't leave me alone, Mick. I was like, dude, he's 105 years old. You knew it was gonna happen eventually. He yeah. can't stay around. He's like Yoda. <laughs> but of course, it was the other fighter's fault that Mick died, which adds to it. And yeah. then he goes to the statue and he throws his helmet at it. And it's all dramatic and stuff. I love that fucking movie. And then he has to go train. Um, of course, it's it's sort of a racist movie a little bit because Apollo's like, no, man, you need to train like a black fighter. <laughs> That's the only way you're going to beat a black fighter is to train like a black fighter. It's like, this is all very weird. And he goes in there and everybody, they portray the gym he's at as everybody's like all mean and staring at him and shit like that. It's very weird. And then you have, wow. of course, the beach scene where they're like, Haha, let's be gay on the beach together. Yeah, <laughs> it's that was that that was a pure that was a pure homo erotica. And I like. Oh, yeah. I Just like a it. strange, strange movie, dude. But I still love it. And my favorite part is Mr. T is one of the most physically formidable bad guys he, he ever faced. He was a great bad guy physically. He was he dude. He threatened to fuck Balboa's wife. I know. He's like, well, just come over here, girl. Get some. I mean, <laughs> fucking Mike Tyson that shit up. That's that's when Balboa was like, light it up. Yeah. Light up, Nick. I want the fight. Um, but um, 
and then the end, my one of my favorite lines of dialogue in the fight when he's fighting and, and Rocky's just taking, he's like, "You ain't so bad. You ain't so yeah. bad. You ain't so bad." While he's getting his ass kicked, I just love that scene. So yeah, yeah. I love Rocky three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Sorry, my, I went that's my number. No, that's my number four. Um, I don't think it was. I look. I I agree with all the points. I don't think it was racist though. I think I think the whole idea in the eighties like that. I just feel like yeah. it was like one of those things. All he said was Paulie was like, you can't, you try to like a color fighter. He's not a color fighter. Oh, like yeah. he's like, he's a white dude that moves around like all, you know, chunky and clunky. I don't just to clear that up. I don't mean, I don't mean, I don't think the movie was racist. I, I just thought it was, a, it was very weird racial stuff was going on. I feel on like they were just showing the, uh, yeah, maybe, but I did like, you know, there was a lot of things about it though. I, I definitely agree that it had like a sheen to it. Like it was like a, like a clean, it felt clean. Like the yeah. other ones were like down and dirty and guttery and it kind of made it kind of felt like you know you you were on that journey with Rocky in those movies like you could feel like so you could smell the fucking ass sweat in the air from the gym and like how he was trying to get himself out of that place and in this one it was just like it felt corporate or something I don't know I don't know how to say it it, it just felt like it went through the machine and it came and got you Hollywoodized still a great movie his story was good but yeah I I did like so there was that I didn't like that too much it was kind of it was weird it was like this the vibe was weird in that one yeah because it come from Rocky too then this one the vibe is off but uh it was still good um and I did like I do like though that they explored the the friendship better with Carl Weathers and, and or Apollo Creed and, and 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 Rocky I thought that was cool I thought I liked how they bonded and shit and then he became like the next like he's like I can't do what I used to do anymore but you're my friend and I'm gonna help you out I like I liked all that stuff dude uh, and then um and, and then obviously the ending when he was like ding ding and they have that you don't know who won I thought that was cool I, I don't know dude it was just it, it had problems for sure and Clubber Lang was great because prediction bang I he was scary very intimidating yeah. bad guy but um. Yeah, overall, I just think it was a, a weird vibe. The movie had a weird vibe to it, but I feel like it was it was well done. So yeah, there I'm being still great. Yeah. And but, again, again, by the way, even the criticisms that's leveled at this, again, like Mike said, these are nine and tens. Like these are small nitpicky things that we can pick out. That's 100%. it. I, w- I would probably give Rocky three a nine or nine point five. Yeah, and I, I see. I I could have flipped them. I almost like thought I might put Rocky Balboa at four and Rocky three at five. But I I mean they they can be flipped any day of the week. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I could flip those two as well. Um, but I was just looking at, I was spying out of my little eye over here, dude, and fucking Mary with a guy. Holy shit. shit. Now it's in Texas. Too. Mary. I haven't seen Mary in a minute. And she came back like, ah! <laughs> that was, I don't know what that was. That was you throwing money everywhere. Yeah, that's great, Mary. Thank you she so much. She came back like the Joker at the end of 89 Batman. Just she descended from the clouds. Night. <laughs> red and green thank you mary thank you so much holy shit balls um Amazing. to answer your question what's the best song from all the rocky movies is it eye of the tiger i say no what do you think Eye of the tiger is the most recognizable movie and i think everybody would go to that but i think the best song um uh from any of the rockies movies is from rocky four no easy way out that's mine that is mine yeah well yeah. dude rocky four had so many great songs I and mean, you had no easy way out you had um hearts, hearts on, on fire, fire sweetest victory it though that's one of the best soundtracks of all time but it's definitely going to be no easy way out for me plus it was it was shot really awesome if you guys don't remember that we did a whole video based on that by the way uh, yeah where michael myers uh we we recreated the uh the thing from four the montage with michael myers driving the car that seriously that not only is that the greatest song of the rocky soundtrack in my opinion but maybe one of the greatest songs that has ever christened the earth i mean mm-hmm. you know what it's i really mean good. we're not indestructible Baby, yep. better get that straight. What is it? What does it says at the end of it? Uh oh god. He does he almost goes Team America or like World Police or like South Paul with his voice with a Hur! it's a tell you how we feel inside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. It's a great song. <laughs> so good. yeah, no easy way out's really fucking underrated. I don't I mean a lot of people never even say that song. Like if you ask them, it's like you said, Mary, it's got Eye of the Tiger is usually always the one, but no easy yeah. way out. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. Mary, once again, thank you so fucking much. Thank you, Mary. Man, I, I hope that you forgot all about No Easy Way Out, and then we can give your afternoon the, the bump that it needs by listening to that song when you're done here, because it fucking rules. Good times. Um, next, next to, like Bill says, Mbop. Mbop is the greatest song. That is the greatest song. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, of course it is. We all know that. Right next to Chumbawamba. Mm-hmm. And I might mean that unironically. Uh, you can keep your arm. I'm just getting a photo. Huh? What do you say? Someone tell me what he said. I can't hear you. 
What'd you say? I was getting a soda. Oh, okay. I was like, you can keep um, going. I'm just getting a soda. I asked them and nobody answered me. So what? What the fuck? Wait, I asked them what you said. Oh. I said, what do you say? <laughs> go fuck yourself. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. Uh, okay. So number five for me is going to be, this is tough. This is tough. I'm going to go as well. Very close to you. I'm going to go Rocky Balboa. Yeah. I almost put something else in there though. I did. I know what you were going to um, do. I thought about it. You slut. Oh, I, 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 uh, I will go Rocky Balboa because, because I love, again, I love the end of it. I know you always hated the fact that he didn't win. I they had the two, fact- but they shot, at least they had an alternate ending where he did win, but it was kind of corny. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I liked the fact, because if you watch Rocky one, if you pay close attention to it, I think it's one of the genius things they do with the camera when he wins and everybody rushes the thing still makes me cry every time I watch it, by the way, even though it's like pop cultureized or whatever, the whole Adrian thing yeah. just makes me, it tears me up every fucking time. But like when they crowd the arena as he's over here celebrating and he's looking for Adrian, all the cameras focused over here. There's just this little moment where they announce the winner of the fight is Creed and yeah. uh, is Apollo. And he's like, yeah. And he's like celebrating and he's all blocked off and it's a terrible camera shot and you can't even see him. And it's almost the movie telling you, Hey, just with a shot of the camera, it's telling you, Hey, it doesn't matter that he won. That's not what yeah. this is about. This is about that. A regular man survived. And I thought they went back and they kind of book into the franchise by doing that in Rocky Balboa too, because he's walking, he's walking away while they announced the, the winner. He doesn't even give a fuck. All he yeah. wanted to do was prove he could be there. So I thought that was really cool. And then you already said it, the speech with his son, you know. That's one of the best speeches. That's what quit us doing, quit us, and that ain't you, or whatever it yeah. was. Um, that's how winning gets done. But that yeah. speech is one of the greatest speeches in the entire lore of the franchise. I just thought this one felt. The fact well, if you know what you're worth, they go get what you're worth. Yeah. <laughs> but don't blame it on him or him. <laughs> Dude, I can, so well, anytime you need, like, a bit of, like, inspiration, just YouTube that fucking thing. That's all you it's amazing. Do. Um, but... Yeah, dude, and the fact that Adrian's dead, and when he's fighting, they did that. It was almost scary where they were like go gray and white, and you would hear her talking mm-hmm. when he was in the ring and stuff. That stuff was good. I just thought it was a really deep. It just felt like it felt like the original in a lot of ways. So I yeah. love that movie. There was really a good. lot more realness to it. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. sure. Brought it back to like cinema, <laughs> whereas the other ones were kind of yeah. blockbuster movies, you know, it brought it yeah. all the way back and stripped it down and brought it back to what you know, Rocky was all about in the beginning. We're pra- we're praising Rocky. That means that we will not have Sylvester Stallone smearing dog shit in our faces anytime mm-hmm. soon. You see, he can come on here and I'd let him actually. I actually would do. Show. It was, that's all right. Uh, my number three is going to be, uh, now this might be a little controversial, but it's okay. Cause that's what we're all about here is Rocky one. Um, I, you know, Rocky Woo! one is classic. For all obvious reasons, but it's not my favorite. It's not even my second favorite, all because I'm a bitch and I'm a whiner. And he lost in Rocky One. I don't like that, Jim. <laughs> I don't like that. I didn't like that at all. I love the story and the idea behind it. And I know why they didn't do it. Of course, you know they, you know, but what you said, it's not about winning. It's just about where you come from and how you, how he overcame the odds. And he just wanted to go the distance, like he to prove that I'm I'm a prize fighter. And I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. I'm nobody cares. And then he gets up in there and he takes on the champion of the world and he goes the distance, almost knocks him out. Of course, that's cool and it's beautiful and it's great. And it, it won an Academy Award, I think. But I just, I, I, I'm a bitch. I'm a whiner. I wanted him to win. I'm a lover. I, I'm a I And I think everybody in the theater, when they watched it, they were like, fuck shit. It was a shocker. They're like, he didn't win? Like, it was really crazy. But it was, a, it was still, it's a solid movie. And that's really the only thing I'm going to nitpick about it. That's why it's not number, because you know what's going to be number two now. Like that, that's literally the only thing that separates. So even though number two had a little bit, but I, I like to, I'll get there, but Rocky one was great. It was, you know, and it did show like a normal, you know, blue collar guy that that's in Philadelphia, that he's working his ass off to be something. Nobody believes in him. He's fucking clean and spit all that shit out of the gym. Mickey doesn't believe in him. Nobody believes in him. And then he gets his ass kicked for nothing. And then he finally gets picked to be the Italian stallion. and gets Apollo Creed. I love it. I always felt like, when I watched that movie, though, <clears throat> he had a reason to be angry at Mickey when Mickey just shows up and wants to be his trainer. And he was like, nobody believes it. Be like, you know, he's like, yeah, I get it. You're mad as fuck. And I would be, too. He's like, I did all this on my own. And now all be these cocksuckers are coming out of the woodwork. Be like, hey, I'm your friend. I'm your buddy. Let me train you. Let me hang out with you. Let me hold your butt sack. Nut sack, not butt sack. <laughs> you got a butt sack. It's really <laughs> What's weird. a butt sack? That's, that's a hernia. Or no, that's called a hemorrhoid. Uh, that's the two hemorrhoids stacked on each other. Butt. 
Just yeah, it's a fat ass. Butt. It's a jelly butt. But no, um, so that's why I just didn't like. That's what I'm gonna say is like really, it's just because he didn't win. That's it. yeah, yeah. That that's always stuck crawl up your bean bags. Well, I, I just, I don't, I think a lot of people felt like that. They're like, why didn't he fucking win? It's a solid movie all the way around, but fuck. <laughs> uh, my number three is going to be Rocky II. Rocky uh-huh. Two, Two Blue Shoes. I, I actually just watched this before the stream this morning. Um, uh-huh. You know, it's a great movie. Don't get me wrong. It's a great movie, but it kind of retreads one a little bit. It's kind of like Rocky one and a half. It's sort of the Evil Dead 2 to Evil Dead to me. Yeah. And it seemed like the fight ended up being kind of an afterthought in the movie. So like, I mean, all of a sudden Adrian finally wakes up, you know, yeah. and he's like, she's like, just do one thing for me. Win. And mixed like, son of a bitch. Did you hear that? Let's go. What are we waiting for? Yeah. Yeah. And they go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it seems like the training scene was a little bit short for me. And then like, they just go into the fight. The fight was one of the greatest of all time. I think the ending of that fight may be the greatest ending of a Rocky fight where they're mm-hmm. both trying to crawl up and Rocky just has enough just to stand up. And that, that yeah. little inch is what changes the the whole thing. But I don't know. It, was, it seems like they've spent so much time on Rocky proposed, you know, and then they did the commercials, which was fucking hilarious, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I am punchy, you yeah. know, I, just the cards. Um, but the, it's, I love it because it's like his life story, but also there's just, they forget it seems about the fight for a big portion of the movie, but it's still, dude. It's it is the Dark Knight to Rocky, and it's the bigger, prettier, better made version of Rocky. Even yeah. though I just don't like it as much as the original. So yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. Hey, did you give me your best. That's hey. brisk, baby. Um, <laughs> my number two is Rocky two. Um, so I mean, I've pretty much talked about it a little bit. Uh, I like it because he wins, but I also like it because it, I, it also showcases what it's like for somebody to have nothing, and then you're cast into this light, this immediate limelight, and how you're dealing with it. And also the fact that he can't read, and it's also pointing out his shortcomings. It's also showing like a regular Joe that nobody cared about five minutes ago. Now he's like the main attraction, and people are pointing out his shortcomings, and he's not used to the criticisms. Like I, I felt it was sad, but it was like him understanding and figuring out how to deal with all of this. And um, I like the exploration of more of him and Adrian's relationship. I also like the fact that when you see it at the very beginning of the movie, I think it's awesome when Carl Weathers is like in the hospital and he's like something like, I don't remember what Rocky says. So I'm like, did, did, I, did you give me your all? He's like, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, a, I like that, that, that moment of respect between two champions. And of course, Carl Weathers goes out on a, on a, a media circuit and starts saying that he, you know, he was playing with them and he didn't give him his best. I thought that was cool. And then obviously the end of the movie is like fucking ultimate warrior and Hulk Hogan. And when they hug it, you know, it's like in that in the, in the WrestleMania, when they were both fighting. You didn't know it was going to win, but yeah, dude, I liked it a lot. I thought it, I thought it had just as much depth to it as Rocky one. I felt like it, it added a little bit more and maybe it wasn't as like Academy award winning as, as the first one. Cause Rocky one, you never see anything like it. Rocky two was a little different, but I mean, I also liked it cause it gave me what I wanted. It's an add on. <laughs> Dude, I just uh, while you were talking, I remembered uh, it does it does have some great fucking one liners in it though, man. When he's like, Adrian, I never asked you to stop being a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't ask me to stop being a man. <laughs> I'll start saying, Yeah, don't ask him to stop being. I thought that was a great line. Yeah, man. And, um, oh, it was in Rocky Three. Polly was like, "Can I have a job?" Good way he got <laughs> when he got pissed. He's like, "You good? All you had to do was ask." Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, I I don't know. Rocky Two to me is just a classic movie. I love that fucking movie so much. Um, Rocky one obviously is great, but Rocky two is where it's at for me. It's in my heart. My my heart breathes. Or my my uh, my life. What is it? My love lives there too. I don't remember that. My thing. heart burns there too. My heart burns okay. there too. Uh, yeah. All right. Before we do number one, well, I got okay. I got number two. I was gonna say we'll catch up on the super chats before we do number one. Uh, it doesn't leave much to question though. Uh, this is tough for me, dude. I, I always flip flop these fucking two. I really do. Um, I flip flop them hard all day long, like my cock. Just mm. smacking it against Just turning it over, trying to keep it uh, hard. Yeah, trying to make it look respectable. Yeah, but- um, that's what you do every morning with Folgers. I'm going to go with, yeah, my number two is going to be Rocky. We talked about it a little bit. It's tough between these two. Yeah. It really is. We might as well just finish the list now because I, yeah, you Rocky know Four what it is. is number one. Um, but yeah, uh, Rocky is number two. And dude, th- between this and Rocky Four, I flip flop because Rocky to me is the most emotional of the movies. 
I fucking cry my eyes out. If I need to cry, I'll just throw on this goddamn movie. The scene you preluded to it already when Mick comes to him and nobody believes him. And even Mick thinks he's a piece of shit. And then when he gets this title shot and he comes up and he's like, you know, that we talk about all the time on the channel where he's like, he's like, you didn't want to come over before? What's the matter with my house? That's right. Yeah. It stinks. It stinks. It's like, smells like butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that turtle in there and it does look like a shithole. And he's like, nobody gave a fuck about me. And now all of a sudden, you know, and I just, man, that shit gets me every fucking time. I love it so goddamn much. And it's just the, it's a, it's a classic. The only reason I put four above it is four is like the super shredder amped up. It has all the stuff almost that Rocky has in it, but it also has all the stuff that like Rocky three has in it. It was the penultimate moment. It was Rocky in his prime the yeah. franchise in its prime. You had the Dolph Lundgren, the true unbeatable, just fucking unstoppable Monster. force. Yeah. It had all the fun of the fun of Rocky movies, but it had all the serious moments of the serious moments that it had it all just packed in. It was just a supercharged, holy shit, cocaine fucking Rocky mo movie with the best soundtrack on top of yeah. it. So Rocky yeah. four is my number one. It's funny because if I want a good cry, I just look at my bank statements. But <laughs> but I well, we'll agree. Rocky four, my number one as well. Uh, best soundtrack of any of them. It's the full evolution of Rocky Balboa. It's everything that every fan wanted to see of Rocky. It's got the best bad guy in the Rocky series in Drago, 100% the best bad guy. Um, and he is, he's, he's, he's a, he's a, he's, it's an immovable object meets a unstoppable force in that particular. And, and, and dude, that's exactly what it is. And it's so great to see. And it's also got the stakes are high because Carl Weathers dies, Apollo gets killed. And then, you know, you got Adrian that don't believe in him anymore. Or doesn't oh, even man, think he can win. Part. He's like, oh, Adrian, don't, you know, I do. It's so fucking good. It's so good. And then he has to really go to this motherfucker was lifting logs in Alaska or where the fuck in Siberia. <laughs> like he was running in fucking 80 foot snow and like doing all sorts of crazy shit to get ready for this fight. And obviously, um, Drago over there is sitting there fucking cheating, getting some steroids in his juice. But man, it was great. And I, the, the, even the line, uh, that, uh, Drago says Dolph Lundgren, he was like, he is not human. He is like a piece of iron. Because <laughs> I fight for me, for me. Dude, it's so cool. Yeah, it's 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 Rocky Four forever. That is, and dude, uh, probably you said it, it's got the best training sequence too of the whole franchise because he's yeah. out in the foot. Dude, he was jacked. As I know too with that beard. Holy shit! I want to suck his wiener right there. <laughs> yeah, especially when he was hanging upside down. Like, let me suck your dick upside down. <laughs> <laughs> uh that shit was amazing man mm -hmm. yeah th if if the whole if this was a series rocky four would have been the last episode to me like yeah the extreme I, holy shit i still feel like rocky four should have got an academy award dude it really should at least got something for the music or something or, or whatever people disrespect it because like you know they think it was too like i guess corny like i don't know mall of america corny whatever but i don't i really don't see it like other than him you know yeah him ending the cold war single-handedly probably a little much <laughs> if, if i could change you, you could, could change, change we all can yeah. <laughs> it was kind of stupid that they did that but oh well i mean by, you know wars have ended over dumber things i guess <laughs> yeah think about like gladiator back in the day yeah. you know what i mean like this shit like that happened but yeah, dude, I love that movie. So, and that is the that's the moment too when she's like, "You can't win." You see his head go, <laughs> and then like, yeah, he's like, "Oh, no. he goes, Adrian, Adrian says it, it must be true." <laughs> she's like, <laughs> oh, dude, I forgot. Also, uh, this goes back to Rocky too. When, dude, when, when he gets his money and he's like a little kid because he's never had money before. It's like when you get your first paycheck and you start working yeah. and you've been broke your whole life. He goes, he gets a car and he gets the watches and then they go to look at a house and he walks over. He's like, oh, that's some nice bricks right there. And Adrian goes, my husband's an expert in bricks. He's like, yeah, those look real strong, real strong bricks you got. <laughs> yeah, that's true. yeah, I remember that part. Yeah. That's a nice mailbox. That's a nice mailbox. He's like, you know, those numbers together, they almost add up to nine. That that's a good omen. <laughs> he said almost. <laughs> yeah. Good masonry work. Yeah, dude. It, it's a great movie. It's, it's it's got a lot of heart. Like that movie is literally a heart, like heartfelt movie. It's all about heart. That's what Rocky Balboa is about. That movie is heart. That's yeah. about overcoming and 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 and, and it, you can look at the symbolism over. It's like you got something in your life that you don't think you can overcome, and it could be something that seems unbeatable, but it you know it can be beat. And that's what he does in the ring. He beats the unbeatable. And I feel like that's a that could be you know symbolic for something in your life that you feel is unbeatable and you do it. You rise yeah. up to the challenge. Cream, to, you rise up to the cream, the cream yeah. to the top, whatever the fuck Ooh, the saying is. Rises to the top. That's what I do. I look at my dick and I'm like, I bet you can't beat it. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you can beat, beat that. Those. I'm gonna beat that uh, dick. I'm gonna do it with my hands really? and some lotion, maybe yeah. conditioner if you're Jergens. in the shower. 
Oh yeah. That's the stuff right there. Mm -hmm. Herbal mm -hmm. essences is the best. It smells good. Yep. Um, are we live still? We are. 666 yep. says, did either of you see Ant-Man 3? If so, thoughts? I have not. I have not seen the quantum mania, uh, the shitty mania. I haven't seen it. Me either. I thought about Maybe, it, and then yeah. I was like, I've seen I, that movie. I don't know, man. <laughs> look, look, 666, you fucking devil. Uh, I uh, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I, I we talked about this last week. There's a burnout really happening for Marvel with me. And I mean, it's happening for a lot of people. The, the fatigue is real. And it just looks when I saw it, when I saw the trailer for it, it looked like every other standard Marvel movie. I don't give a fuck. I don't even know what's going on in their phases. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like they've done anything close to what they did in the first phase. When they introduced the bad guy, you knew what we were fighting for. We knew what we were going to get eventually, maybe one day, hopefully. In this one, it's like nothing is happening. Uh, there was a flock of seagulls and an oil shortage and nothing else. <laughs> it's like when Austin Powers was describing the 80s. Uh, I just, I don't know, man. I haven't seen it. I mean, maybe I'll watch it when it comes out on the stream on Disney, but I won't. I, I, I don't see myself going to the theater and watching it. Yeah, eventually. And I, I like I'm Paul Rudd, by the way. I, I think Paul Rudd's great. I just don't give a shit about the movie. Yeah, and I, I do want to see Jonathan Majors as Kang, um, but everything I've seen, like visually, it just looks kind of bad. Just watch. Oh, if you want to see him, just watch Loki. That's where he got introduced. He's great. Yeah. No, I just want, I mean, I just want to see like him because oh, apparently yeah, he's, everybody says he's the best part of the movie or whatever. Like, I want to check it out for that. But I, I just, yeah, I just, I can't, man. Apparently Modoc's awful. Apparently they really dicked him. That's what um, I heard. Yeah. So, which he's kind of corny anyway, but still he's important, right? Modoc's a big character. Yeah. You're telling. Um, but yeah, considered it. Big Spawn. Hey, how can you be out there fighting crime if you're high as fuck, Spawn? Jesus Christ, you're going to use your fucking powers to order pizza. God, it's going to be old. like, oh, I just used up some of my power to order pizza because I'm high as shit. <laughs> I must be old. I was thinking like cookie baked, like, you know, like food baked. I was like, well, technically baked Spawn is baked because he comes from hell. He probably isn't even talking about Spawn the character. He probably It's probably something else, but I just, yeah, I'm true. a geek, so I saw Spawn the character. What's up, guys? Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Have either of you played the original or remake Dead Space game? Have any thoughts on the franchise? I think it's great. I haven't played the remake at all, but I've, I I played all three of the Dead Space games. I think they're fucking great. I think they're awesome. I just, you know, it's weird because Dead Space, I could have seen that being made into a movie and been very, being a very, very successful trilogy if they got the right director for it. Man, I, I think that could have been one of the best horror uh, sci-fi movies out there and they never did but the games are amazing i loved every single one. isaac's fucking badass but i haven't i haven't played the remake now uh what what is the remake is that is that new it's, is that yeah it's the re it's brand new i think it came out like oh, two okay. weeks ago did they, did they do two games they did three they did three dead space games yeah. I, I can't remember which one it was or what i played but i played it i think it was just maybe on 360 when 360 had yeah, it yeah that's did where it, it first was yeah that game fucking ruled dude that game awesome. was scary yeah. loved it a little uh, pee came out every time I had to go around a corner. You just didn't know. You didn't know. And by the way, it was the the uh, the the creatures in that. It looked like something out of a Clive Barker nightmare. And I love the fact that you can like target your 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 gun and sh you have to sh you know shoot off their legs or something to incapacitate them, then blow their head off. Dude, it was fucking cool. I loved it. I'm, I'm going to jail if somebody's listening in on this because they're like, <laughs> "What's going on?" Yeah, I don't. I don't. As you guys know, I don't game very much, but that's one that stuck with me. I was like, "This shit is scary." As it was good. Fuck. Really good. Ismail Vega. Thanks, my friend. Says, have you guys watched the Mindhunter show? David Fincher creates so much fear and tension on screen behind uh, between characters just having a conversation. Such a great show. Hoping for season three someday. Uh, no, I have not seen Mindhunter. Is that about Charles Xavier? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. I've heard about it. I know that people love it. I haven't watched it, though. <laughs> the new Chalupa from Taco Bell. <laughs> Where were you, Charles? <laughs> the new Quesarito. Get yours while supplies last. Um, dude, I watched the first episode of Mindhunter when it came out and stopped watching it. As you know, Dave Ventures, like, that's, that's my favorite director. That's my shit. But stopped watching it. And then when season two came out, me and the wife went back and started and watched them all and really just fucking fell in love with the dude. Was hanging on to every single episode. Watched them all in like a week. It's an amazing show. But the bad news is I just saw today David Fincher came out and said officially – it's not ever coming back. He said the show's too expensive and basically, I guess, Netflix won't pay for it, which is fucking ridiculous because look at the dumb shit Netflix makes. You know, oh. 76 cooking shows, 47 shows nobody's going to watch. Didn't they, make that, they have, didn't they make that pedo show? Like, was it called Cuties? I think that was Netflix. Yeah. Fucking I think. dirty ass whores. Could be wrong. But dude, they green light, they pay 
out the ass for all this dumb shit that nobody watches and they cancel everything good. Mindhunter no. was one of the fucking best shows they ever came up with. And like mm, that and Santa Clarita diet, just go fuck a duck. Yeah. Sucks. It's kind of like, man. welcome to real life where they don't <laughs> give a shit about you. Hey, but if you want to see, um, I can't, not the, the, the bigger dude, the one with the big head. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, fucking awesome actor. He was in the opening to justice league too. Uh, mm-hmm. that guy, Lights Out was a show on FX. Speaking of boxing, if you guys are boxing fans and like the Rocky <laughs> movies, there's a TV show that came out on FX called Lights Out. Fucking awesome boxing show. You should definitely check it out. And it's got that guy from Mindhunters in it. Oh. It does, Jay. You want to fuck? Yep. Um, Bill Green. I'd fuck Bill Green. Says, just hey, Bill. You guys kick butt. <laughs> hey, thanks, Bill. You should have said you. You should have said that. You should. You should have said that. You said I'd fuck him, Bill. He's just being a nice guy. He's like, hey, just want to say you guys kick. He looks like a cool dude that's like really being supportive at your YMCA basketball games. Like, you guys kick butt. You can do it. And Mike's like, I want to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, I Bill, man. That guy. That's a sweet thing for you to say. Yeah, Bill looks like a super nice guy. He looks like he's sitting in a Logan's restaurant or something. He's just having a good time with his family. Thanks, <laughs> dude, Bill. I'm- yeah, Bill, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to make it up to you. I'm going to take that little icon, and I'm going to zoom into it, and I'm going to print it out. I'm going to go in the bathroom and jerk off to it when we're done here. After the show. There you go, Bill. <laughs> this is the kind of content you signed up for, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, that guy just said he's going to come on my face. <laughs> and curse in the super chat. I'm out here talking about jerking off to it. I know. That's why, because that, it, it came across as so nice and just like wholesome. Just want to say you guys kick butt. Mike's like talking I'm, about, I want to fuck you, Bill, and come on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god! <laughs> on that fresh printed paper, dude. I don't even on that note, ink, so it's gonna be kind thanks, of thanks for thanks for the donation, man. We really rub it, it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, thanks, Bill. Appreciate that, and for later, uh, Stephanie. Yeah, I totally agree. And though no one should ever mm. agree with Stephanie or touch her hands, I do agree with her. Um, mm. JT said, "Cuties is a movie." It yeah, is. that's why. I mean, I know sometimes I say a show when I'm talking about a movie. I'm. I'm it's like old. when your I'm grandma always, used to be like, "I got to yeah. watch my pictures." That's like I, I do it sometimes. I'm like I, I'm going to go see that new show in the theater. And they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Show. I'm like, <laughs> "Your movie, <laughs> moving pictures." Oh fuck! Hey, uh, I'm going to close the show out by delivering some news to you folks. And uh, no caller ID. I love your picture. I love your face. It says, "Are y'all coming to Texas Frightmare oh. this uh, weekend in this May?" Uh, the answer to that is no. That's not the news. Uh, the news is that we are officially going to be at Scarefest this year. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's looking like. So we will be at Scarefest this year uh, in 2023. Scarefest. Uh, we will have a booth yet again. Um, so that's officially official, and we'll be yeah. there as guests, um, which will be cool. So we can officially say that if you guys are coming to buy tickets to that or whatever. Uh, not that you would do, go just because we're there, but I'm just letting you know we'll be there. You might not catch us either at the booth. We're also volunteering to like help move the uh, kegs of beer around. Yes. Not that we're going to drink any of it. That's no. that's unchristian. Uh, you can catch that. us a couple hours late because we're usually hung over after the day one. Um, yeah. So we'll be there. Stuffing our face with some Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just need breakfast. it for the juice. <laughs> I just need to get <laughs> I need a little something to kick me up. <laughs> and since we well i won't say that but yeah no it's gonna be fun so it's gonna be fun we'll see you guys there i wish you were closer to water pot we could fuck and stuff mm-hmm. um we do have sex with everyone who comes yeah it's That's always a, it's always short and unenjoyable mm-hmm. we don't sell anything in the booth but um we just everything's free you know we sell, yeah we uh we sell tears of regret that people have mm-hmm. when they come up to the booth <laughs> right but you do have to have sex with us and that's the rules and you have well, to do it behind the booth in front of everyone while they mm. watch that sounds i don't know that sounds like coercion or cohesion uh, yeah. i don't know i don't like that i don't like that <laughs> it's like that scene in rockstar when yeah. those girls are all lined up he's like hey izzy he's like uh, it's like i'm izzy it's like uh, we're in seattle he's like you are in seattle izzy he's like, uh, he's like no i said i was gonna call you, I said I was gonna call you. <laughs> exactly hey, hey right. i hope you have a good birthday tomorrow man um, it's gonna be all right. Just gonna sit around and play video games like a five year old. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. That's probably is that what the I'm plan. Is, is the plan just don't fucking talk to me today? Is no, you know what? Day. You know what? I'm gonna have to fuck. I think I'm gonna have to play Monopoly with April. Why? Because that's all she wants to play is goddamn Monopoly every fucking week. She loves that goddamn game. I have to sit there like, and fucking play it. <laughs> like the board game or like yes, the, video game? the fucking board. Every guy that Ghostbusters game that one of our awesome Patreons got me. Yeah, 
You have played it fucking like 800 times. They should have just given it to her. <laughs> and I like, you no, know, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. Monopoly's fun and all, but Jesus Christ, dude, it's becoming a pandemic around here. Because she'll be like, we haven't played Monopoly in like a week. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's usually like once every year. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Monopoly just, is like a, it's a, that's a once a year thing. It's a fun, like, no, it, because the rules are different in the Monopoly Ghostbusters game. They've got like, like it's kind of different. It's kind of cool, but Jesus Christ, I can't. She beats me anytime. You know what happens, dude? I get so mad about playing. I throw the fucking game. <laughs> like Michael Jordan. Like I just like, oh, I'm not going to buy that property. I'm not going to buy that. Yeah, I'm just going to overpay for this one. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. Because Monopoly takes like three fucking hours. Dude, I, the other day, I literally, my ass was asleep. Because we, we were playing it and my ass fell asleep. It was three and a half hours. Does she get mad at you when you say you don't want to play anymore? Dude, I get to a point where I get it. I don't care. I'm like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Because, I mean, she'll bankrupt. I mean, I don't have any money. I can mortgage stuff off or I could take some houses off or whatever and keep in the game. But I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm walking away. I'm done. Okay, you she's win. like, you're I, not going to try it anymore. Is she's like, okay. No, she just does that, like, hurt feelings thing. She's like, okay. I'm like, don't do that. That just makes me angrier. Because <laughs> now I smell blood. Don't do that around a guy. Oh, don't act like God. you're hurt. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> I can picture angrier. the whole thing with my with my mind's eye. But no, I'm just saying because, like, you know, when somebody's like, she's like, okay. I'm like, I'm because then you're like, now you feel bad. Like, you've really done something, and you're just tired. My ass is asleep. I just want to sit down somewhere that's not on the fucking floor and play Monopoly. So you're just going to have a Harry Potter birthday tomorrow. Just like, hey, nobody fucking know, maybe, walk me. Yeah, it's I'm just going to say, leave me the fuck alone. It's, yeah, it's me and the, and the Harry Potter. I've already uh, I've already beat the main quest, so that's going to do something else. Oh, okay. Get you a new game for your birthday. Yeah, Sorry, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's gonna be anything fun. could happen. I, pr- I appreciate those kind of birthdays. Hey, and we yeah. appreciate all you guys. Thank you guys so fucking much. Thank you for every single one of your super chats. Thank awesome. you, especially Mary. Holy God, Mary, what thank the you fuck so much. That? It was awesome. Um, thank you so much, and uh, happy birthday to you, you piece of shit. I, I hope that you have a fucking awful day tomorrow, and you wake up sick, and that April uh, uh, grows her fingernails out really long, and then fingers your butt with them, and then you get herpes. I thought that you were saying I was going to have a bad day. Not that anyway, her. <laughs> that sounds like a great day. <laughs> Not that her finger has herpes. Maybe she's yeah. scratching. With, I don't know. Anyways, let's go. See you guys. Bye, guys. Love you.